get him Jimmy, where low shack at, the bottles get nippy up the crack and we stacking chips, all of it's what I want, plus money winners, that's what I'm on, you can say I'm gone, I prefer elevated pub sports radio, time to get educated, get produced, lead the juice, letting loose with so much abuse, that the bookies wanna call a truce, they get slaughtered, can't forget Jeff and low baggers in the chat, that's a lethal weapon, cause we be, pubbing. First gamblers, punters, hustlers, low baggers. Happy Thursday, November 16th to all of you. Thank you for watching Betting with the Bag right here on Pub Sports Radio. Swept aboard in NBA last night. Seven straight winners in NBA. Seven straight winners uh, needed it. The Oilers pushed, but I did add that under six and a half in the Islanders game. You know, looking back at it, uh, I mean, obviously hindsight 2020, but damn, I mean, the whole idea was that Horvat and Barzal would come out flying. So I know I try to stay away from player props, but you know, those two guys cashed theirs and the first period cashed. Uh, I felt bad for anybody on the Islanders full game. Uh, but the Canucks are the real deal, man. They're the real deal. Even in situations that don't aren't set up for them, uh, they succeed. And we have lots of teams on back-to-backs. We also have the Global Series uh, popping off. That's at 2 p.m. Eastern. I have moved on the Global Series in Stockholm, Sweden tonight. And we have a huge show, a monster, monster show. We have Connor Mack joining us for NHL and NFL. Then Dabby Cab joins us for the Thursday Nighter in college football, as well as Saturday Best Bets. Then he goes into his three bets in college basketball. Then we have Mikey M, star of the Pimp Slap Play Today, who's opened the season 4-0 and in college basketball. And, and Dabby Cab's 1-0 and in college basketball, so they've combined to go 5-0. and They go back-to-back. Uh, Mikey, star of our big 6 p.m. last call show here on the channel, has four spots that he's attacking. So it goes Dabby Cab for three bets. They're going to go solo. He's going to uh, switch off, and then Mikey M comes on for four bets that he's making. And then Dural, who started the year four and two in NBA, comes on. Uh, all the stats are up to date. Uh, it uh, took a long time. <laughs> so long, man. So we have, you know, 10 different stats. Uh, so the um, – and we talk about the importance of, of transparency and honesty. You'll see some of the records aren't good. Uh, it's just stuff that we have to deal with as cappers. Um. But most importantly, uh, you know, what you get here on the show is legitimacy. Uh, We bet our picks. We deal with the consequences. And then we show honest records. uh, And every pick is a unit. So uh, there you go. Uh, But you're going to see some records that aren't nice. And you're going to see some that are, you know, but it is what it is. Uh, a winning night last night. Uh, you know, we're stringing together success. It's There's just been two bad Sundays for me, really, in NFL. And then about five weeks ago, I had a horrible college football day. Uh, but other than that, like, it's been pretty clean. And, and we're succeeding, which is uh, paramount here. It's great to see you guys. I'm pumped up. Uh, this show, these shows are, are taking enormous amounts of energy to to prep and then have the records up to date. And I know it's all worth it. And you'll see that on this show. This show is packed with information, packed with cappers coming on, packed with action, everything accountable, everything set. So uh, it's great to see you guys. Shout out to all you guys in the chat. Justin McAvee's tax play today. Boyd, anytime touchdown plus 205. Copy and paste that right now. Love it. Uh, Justin, let's get that uh, locked in for our NFL breakdown. With C-Mac. There you go. That's locked in. Andrew G says, uh, the Canucks, Canada's number one team. They are. They are. What can you say? They're playing very well. Uh, Troy Torrance says, Magic uh, with money bags. Yes, very good to us. Very, very good to us. Uh, yesterday was very easy. Yesterday all worked out. And even uh, the not moving on the Kings, you know, was it? should have moved on them. But all those leans all cashed. I only moved on the Cavs first quarter if I had added the first half because uh, I didn't want to cut down the unit size on that. And I, cause I got the minus three at minus minus one sixteen. I thought that was a great place to be in, but that cash, I mean, it could have been just a disgusting day in NBA, which is going right. It's all going right. Uh, Troy Torrance, Tory Coker, fly white. Mike says finally a great NFL primetime game. And Mikey, our star 
of Last Call will be starring in that. And don't forget, next Thursday, we have the triple header. Next Thursday, Turkey Thanksgiving Thursday. I'm just going to have a giant bottle in 12 hours of live action with you guys. A uh, top set in the house. JW says Broncos bills. Wasn't entertaining. You're right. JW. That was great. It was very entertaining. Vermont first half over 67 and a half is uh, the best bet from Tor- Tory Coker for the early action in college basketball. Thank you for sharing that with us. Tory wine time sports. There's Mikey M right there. Mikey M in the house. Uh, Saturated says Bancaro abused Vooch and the entire soft as bulls. The they did. They, they were just so much more athletic and so much, they're just, you know, better, you know. Uh, Ron Crawford's spreadsheet play of the day is in. And that's great news, Ron, because I'm right there with you. I moved on to minus one line, you know, for plus money action. But I'm right there with you, Ron. And, Ron, I didn't finish up your incredible numbers in NHL for your spreadsheet plays of the day. Uh, so I will get there. Uh, but uh, you've been hitting so hard, man, so hard. There we go. A uh, top set ready to work. So if you're in Hollywood, Florida, two million guaranteed, four hundred dollar buy-in. That sounds real nice. Four hundred dollar buy-in for two million. Uh, early college basketball for JPC St. Louis minus three and a half in the under one forty-five and a half in Charleston, Vermont. So we'll copy and paste that action. We won't be able to get to those games, but uh, Tory Coker, both Tory Coker and JPZ moving on them. So let's get uh, JPZ's action right there, and then of course let's get uh, Tory's as well vermont first half over lock and load here thank you guys for sharing your early college basketball action with us all right all right uh e sure gaming in the house it's happening viper mb christopher carter serious business jay smooth ready to get to work what up jay smooth we got a great group, and we got a ton of cappers. We got so much. This is this is, uh, you know, I, I'm really excited about this show. We put so much energy into it. There's so many cappers coming on, firing bullets. So I'm excited about, very excited about franchise. LeBron, Deshaun G, North Ender, Zari. Let's go, let's go, Mister Vape in the house. Uh, you know, I hear you, Mr. Babe. It's a, it's a battle. It's a battle. Uh, JPZ says Canucks was a great bonus live bet. Talk about the Oilers as a great bonus live bet. Live betting is going just so glorious. So glorious. A nasty Nate in the house. Thank you for the kind words. Wine time, my guy. Uh, great to see all you guys. Res Mob ready to get to work. There's Joey Harb, Stimmy OG ready to eat. We got uh, Sky Dragon in the house. Sacramento to win the title at 65 to 1. Uh, wine time is on the under 46 in the NFL game, as well as Boston College plus three in call in our Thursday night uh, standalone Thursday night game. So let's make sure that I've got that copied and pasted so we can uh, discuss wine time's action. Slatsy says 2 p.m. game from Sweden. Wing sends over six and a half. Stutzla plus two and a half shots on goal. His family and friends from Germany think he shows up. I do. Well, he always shows up. The guy's a monster. An absolute uh, monster. Christian Hoover, a Markel, ready to go. Cash big on Celtics minus six, even though it went to two and a half. Nice job. Camera Raphael, uh, Andrew G. I love it. Uh, tailing Tone Miggins, our guy Tone Miggins, what a monster. The Sweaty Butcher, ready to eat. Kevin K, Bo Jackson, Al Servig, YOLO in the house. All right. So let's roll. Let's go out there and let's get this cash today. Uh, we have so many great gambling opportunities on the card. We have five different leagues we're going to be attacking. So let's get right to work. Let's get into NHL. Let's bring on our guest in NHL. As soon as I see him backstage, he's ready to rock right now. And we have a huge NHL card for us to attack. So without further ado, please welcome from Las Vegas, Nevada. He will be capping NHL and NFL with us this morning. Please welcome Mr. Connor Mack to the show. Miggy, Miggy, Mack, Daddy, how are you, my man? Jimmy, what's going on? I am, uh, I'm good. We got a huge card, huge day, and I'm ready to keep rolling. It's been good. Yesterday was good. You talked about the NBA. I swept it. Nice. As well with the Kings. I wanted to hit on DG with the Kings to win the title. I think so. I definitely think you, to win the West even more. You know, I, I mean, I don't mind that bet, but I, I do think they're live. I think that's worth it. I might put a little money on it as well to win the West. So I love it. I just wanted to comment on that. 
No, it's cool. It's an interesting look. Uh, they sure look dominant last night. They sure look dominant. Uh, and we have Kong's Clips giving us the best bet of the day. Shakur Stevenson by stoppage. KO, TKO, DQ at plus 300. Shakur Stevenson by stoppage from our friend Kong's Clips. Let's get into NHL right now. And we start with the NHL Global Series. We've already heard uh, from our guy, Ron Crawford, the spreadsheet play of the day is in. It's the Ottawa Senators minus 128. That's how we start here. We start with our guy, Ron Crawford, on the exact same bed as me. We are uh, correlated here on the Ottawa Senators. Shout out to Ron Crawford. Uh, and uh, nothing happened, Jose. Joey, Jose is good to go. He's all good, all good. Christopher Comentini says, "Cmac, are you going to F one?" I, I, I've got a guess. My guess is, no. Are you? No. Going to F1? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just stand there to watch the fucking zing go by. I mean, I get, I get. No, we got too busy of a time right now. Wait. Capping. Way no. too busy. Let's head to Avicii Arena in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, Huso, as we heard from Slatsy in the chat, going to be away for the week. It is twenty-eight to one for the Kings to win the West right now. That's uh, appealing, actually. That's, I think I might uh, I may have to uh, join you guys on that. Uh, that would mean that I would have the LA Kings to win the Western Conference NHL, the Sacramento Kings to win the Western Conference NBA. Kind of like that. Okay, here we go. Uh, James Reiner will Reimer will be in the between the pipes. Look, he's a good backup goalie. You know, he's a good backup goalie. Uh, he's never been able to be a starting goalie. Uh, how is he going to handle Huso being away for the week? How is he going to handle such a high-profile game? He'll probably handle it pretty well. Corpus Allo in the other net, he hasn't been very good. You know, the Swedes and Finns are major rivals. I'm sure that a lot of people in Stockholm Arena will want Corpus Allo to fail here. But mm -hmm. I'm sure he'll step up, and I'm sure he'll have a lot of fans around him and family this weekend. It's a huge, huge, huge game for Corpus Allo. Detroit power play at 22.2%, penalty killing at 79%. Ottawa power play at 21.8%, penalty killing at 75.0%. Uh, let's get into the line history here for this one. And, you know, it's it, this kind of reminds me of a college football game. You know, you have the under 500 home team, not the home team, pseudo home team, but the under 500 team is a, is a pretty clear favorite. And I agree with it. Look, I like that second line of the Red Wings. You know, I, you know, they're, they're a, they'd be a great third line. I like Cop. I like what he can do. Yeah. You know, I like Comfer. I, these are guys that I like, but they're not top six forwards. And it doesn't matter who you put on the wing with them. And they try to put, you know, offensive guys on the wing with them. It doesn't matter to me. I think that Ottawa is a very good team. Now, they don't have Ridley Gregg and they don't have Thomas Shabbat. And maybe very good is too far. But, I've watched them a lot this year, and they have a top six group that is very, very good. Maybe yes. their bottom six isn't as strong, and maybe they're maybe without Shabbat, uh, you know, you put too much pressure on Chickering and all that, and that's all valid. But I think they're better than Detroit, and I know Detroit has Euros on the Steam more cider. It's a huge, huge week for him. But I like the. I want to start my day with the Senators here. So Red Wings snapped their two-game losing streak with a 5-4 win at home over Columbus on Saturday. The Sands coming off their second win in three games, 4-1 at home over the Flames on Saturday. Those two wins that they had in Toronto and then over Calgary, they were really strong victories. Complete control all game long of those two victories. And, you know, I agree with this line. I think the Senators should be favorites. Uh, this opened up at minus 124. It's got up to minus 134. It's got into the minus 130s a couple times. The initial move was towards Detroit. I imagine if you were, you know, betting 800 to 1,000 NHL games a year that you'd gravitate always towards these plus lines. But my quantity of action is smaller these days. I only have three bets on today's card. Maybe some will be added. But I'm taking the best team here, and I think Ottawa is the better team. From a total standpoint here, Let's move over here from a total standpoint. The pinnacle has it moved to seven. It's not a real seven. It's a six and a half. You can either get a very juiced over six and a half or a, a plus money over seven. Uh, I don't want to deal with that. Take it away for yeah. us here. We have Avicii Arena, Stockholm, Sweden, the big ice rink for the global series. Red Wing Senators, C-Mac, what's your plan? Jimmy, hit. do you have pinnacle open right now? You have it open normally, yeah, don't you? Right now, yeah. Tell me what that this is moved to. Oh, 
though that's I, what I gave the movement I was on pinnacle. It, uh, what are they? What is it? The second though? Are they up to minus one forty? No, it's minus one twenty eight. Oh, okay, I'm seeing wow, it. Wow, like, is it moved I, to minus one forty at uh, like Will Hills? No, but like, I see it at Bookmaker, a couple others. I was just wow. Looking. There's the one thirty fives like at the super book. I was oh, just, it just sorry, it just moved. It just moved to minus one thirty two. Okay, I was just wondering. I think I think it's moving in the in the right direction. Yeah. I agree with you. You were talking about the top six. That's what I love about Ottawa, and they can get a little bit sloppy, you know, especially on the road, uh, and give up goals. But I'm in agreement with you here in this first one. You talked about both, you know, the Swedes on on both these teams that are good and should be really pumped up. But I got to be on the Senators. Uh, I want it as well. I don't love that this line's. Moving a little bit, because um, I don't know if I want to take the minus one. Are you taking the minus one? Oh yeah, I want I want the plus money spot. I, I will always right. always take uh, it. Right now you get it a plus one twenty one at Pinnacle. I took it at Bet three sixty five. It was a, it was two cents different. I could have got it was back then when I bet it, which was I don't know not that long ago, maybe an hour and a half ago, two hours ago. Uh, you could have got uh, plus one twenty four at Pinnacle. So it's moved down to uh, plus. 121 right now and statsy says DraftKings is holding a minus 120 so if you'd prefer okay. that that's it's up, up for what would you prefer no give me the minus one all right minus one at plus 121 for c-mac that means c-mac myself and also ron crawford and jay peasy all together north ender uh we're all here on the senators and I'm excited. I'm excited about this game. Uh, by the way, uh, Rocco Rogers has uh, both teams to score two goals, two or more parlay with Ottawa, Detroit, Pittsburgh, and New Jersey doubles at minus 115. And uh, Tory Coker moving on the under today with wine time in the football game. I'm just going to copy and paste that really quickly, and then we can move on. Uh, Ghost Joker uh, is on the over. Uh, says last four games head to head over. I mean, you know, the big rink is a little different, but. But I hear you trend wise, and then there's clearly that's where the market's going is towards this over. Towards it, yeah. So I get it. Let me just uh, copy and paste this for NFL uh, CMAC, and then we will move on. So there's wine time right there with his action, and then we got Tories under. All right, good fodder for us moving forward, and let's go. So there's the uh, global series. We're on the Senators. I'm excited about that game. It pops off in two hours and 41 minutes. We move on to 7 p.m. Eastern. The Vegas Golden Knights, 12-3-1, 4-2-0 oh, on the road at the Montreal Canadiens, 7-7-2, seven, 5-5-0 seven, five, five, oh, at home. We're at Bell Centre in Montreal, Quebec. I've been saying this for, what, this, this is my third year, talking about how important Chandler Stevenson is to this hockey team. Uh, he is absolutely phenomenal. He does everything. He's fast. He's big. He hits. It was. I didn't think he had hands. You know, three years ago for you, I was like, you know, he's a quality third line sentiment. I didn't think he had the hands to be a first line sentiment. He's shown that he has it. So he's been out. He's very close to returning. Nicholas Roy's been out. Uh, he's not close to returning. Uh, Nicholas Haig, that six foot six defenseman who was also so spectacular during that Stanley Cup run, he's very, he's been out. He's close to returning. So Haig and Stevens are close to returning. I don't know if they're going to return tonight. Uh, so, and, and I don't want anything to do with Vegas uh, without Stevenson and Haig. Uh, you know, uh, now, uh, if it was, if Haig was in and Stevenson was still out, I would that's I would still again say I don't want anything to do with Vegas. I, I I truly think he's one of the best centermen in the entire league. And I know that may sound crazy wow. to people, but top five? Way, well, no. Top ten. Just because he just because he, you know, he he can't really be the center on the power play. Like, you know, when yeah. you're down a goal, it's not like you're like Chandler, get out there and get us the win. Kind <laughs> of yeah, yeah. But he is so important. He's what every team needs to win a Stanley Cup. He's, I think he's phenomenal. But he might, you know, there's he just probably doesn't have the offensive skill to be put in the, in with the other guys, you know. Uh, but I love him, and we've seen what happens to Vegas when he's out of the lineup because Vegas, with missing their two top defensemen, still win. This is the oh, yeah. only player that I've seen of this juggernaut Stanley Cup winning team that you take out and they stop winning. Uh, you know, and you watch his team so closely. Do you agree that he, this is the only player we've seen m leave the lineup and then stop winning? Yeah, for the most part. You talked about the defensemen. They've been able to just fill it in throughout, you know, the last few years. It, it really hasn't mattered. So, yeah, 
Do you want to hit the last few things where we get in this, Jim? Yeah, you quickly done? I will. Uh, by the way, okay. Tom says I think we should have a meetup down here once sports betting and full casino pops off between the beach track casino. Yeah, we when we did it, Top Set, whatever it was, like four years ago, five years ago, is one of, is maybe the best weekend. I arguably I, with the Pub of Blues is the best weekends of my life, but the Miami was phenomenal. So let's go. Vegas, 21.6% power play, 86% penalty killing. Aiden Hill has been so good this year. I can't believe every team in the league could have had him uh, hmm. last year. Uh, Jake Allen is not in net. Uh, Rocco Rogers saying that Primo has been confirmed. Uh, Nuffle John says, I think Vegas will be back in regular routine. I, I, so you think Stevenson and Haig are going to be out there? Because I was trying to get that information. Ghost Joker says Knights money line, but Montreal seems good on the spread. Nate Dog on Montreal plus one. So let's go into the line history here quickly for Knights Habs. We have the Knights sitting at minus 192. They opened up at minus 195. So very little movement on the money line. And from a total perspective here, we have the six in the, oh, sorry. We have the six. It's minus 114 to the over. Uh, it opened up. At six, it got up to six and a half there for a brief minute, but it's 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 actually moved. It's basically exactly where it opened, so there's been almost no movement there. So uh, Vegas comes in off its third loss in four games, three zero the Capitals on Tuesday. Habs coming off their second straight loss, two one at home to the Flames on Tuesday. Uh, Chris Weidman and David Savard, two defensemen, remain out for the Habs. Take it away for us here, C Mac Golden Knights Canadians. Yeah, this game was just a little bit tough for me to make. A bet on, you know, total, I lean the under in this spot, but after the Knights getting shut out, I, I, that's not been very good. They could, they could erupt here, but Montreal struggled to score a goal, especially as of late. They were my only loss on Tuesday with Pete. We had a good day. I had the Habs, um, Jimmy two one there. I Marshall made a huge save on Anderson late in that game. I thought it was going to get tied up, but so that was pretty tough. The, yeah, the Knights, what do you think? You know, they come back They after the White House trip, and everyone's saying stone, and everyone was just saying, we played a good game, just couldn't get anything in the net. I don't really want them, even at a bounce like you were just talking about. Not here, not now, not at this price. Could they go in there and win 4-2? Sure. But I – and I'm just not running to Montreal right now. They're just not putting, you know, shots to the net. I just – I can't take them. And they could win here. And Vegas is asleep again. but. In the end, I just this was a pass for me. We had a pretty big card, and like I said, I lean under. That like I had a ton of stuff to that, but in this series, there's been a few more goals as of late. A couple other things that just kept me off. Yeah, Slatsy says Anderson zero goals in 16 games on the top line. That's nuts to me. Swiggy says coming off a <laughs> yeah. loss, if they show up, even their depth with Aiden Hill should be fine, right? Minus 200 is the cost of a healthy team, though. I, I don't, I don't want. I, I, I rarely will take road teams at that number. I don't know if I. Uh, well, you know what? I take that back because I'm on the Lightning today after getting shut out back-to-back -back games uh, after Chicago came into Tampa and beat them on mom's night. So I'm on a minus one eight. I, I took it on the minus one line. But so I, I'm not against uh, road teams of this number, but I need to really have conviction if I'm going to do it. Uh, so uh, we do have a question, though, C-Mac. You, did you move on Vermont Charleston uh, in this early spot? I didn't know. No. Uh, and that's yeah, what we nice. should do with C-Mac on these uh, NHL days is if there is early college basketball games. I'll work on that. I I was just – it took. I was so focused on having everybody's records out and all that. So, uh, But I, I can work on that, and I'll make sure that we get that going. Uh, there is our guy, Clint Starr, the Die Hard MMA podcast under the weather right now, but uh, still looking to get that catch. Thank you for sharing your action here. Uh, let me copy and paste that. Uh, here, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, and then Billy Friedrich says, uh, you know, how is how, how are the Kings not a bigger favorite? It's simple. The Panthers have won five straight. I, I, I'm confidently on the Kings. I think that line is fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think we can take advantage of it. But the, yeah, what's getting away of the Panthers? I do, but I can understand market wise. I, I get it. I mean, yeah. and it's early. Kings have been not great at home. Yeah, so far, I, three, Panthers three, rolling. Three yeah, no, I, huh. I, so I think there's nothing, you know, uh, overly um, surprising by that line. I think we can take advantage of it, though. Uh, the Gen dude, thank you for the kind words. Uh, let's roll on to the next spot on the board. 7 p.m. Eastern, New Jersey Devils, 7 6 1 4 3 0 on the road at Pittsburgh Penguins, 8 6 0 3 4 0 at home. We're at PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, D Gen dude, thank you for being a member, man. If any of you guys, you know, put in that 
for us. Uh, have a, oh, yeah. anything, ask anything. We'll stop everything for it. Vitek Vanacek, Tristan Yari. Vanacek, 3-3-1, 3.3 3 .3 goals against average, 9-11 save percentage. Tristan Yari, 6-5-0, 2.31 goals against average, 9-18 save percentage. Three shutouts for Yari. Uh, you know, the Penguins or Penguins are playing very good hockey right now. They'll do this at times. They've done mm -hmm. this over the last few years. They did this last year and didn't make the playoffs. You know, there's times where they look very good. You know, any team with Sid the Kid on it can tighten up, play good hockey. Uh, this total opened up at over 6.5 minus 125. This moved four cents to the over to minus 129 over at Pinnacle. And from a money line standpoint, we have Pittsburgh at minus 132. Uh, they opened up minus 145, a 13 cent move away from them. Uh, New Jersey's power play still at 38.6%, but it will continue to drop. Uh, now, Hughes is very close to returning. Uh, does Hughes come back tonight? I couldn't get that information, uh, but he's very close to returning. His year will be out at least until at a minimum this weekend, but I don't know if he'll be back then. The Devils coming off their third straight loss, 6-3 at the Jets on Tuesday. Uh, the Pens coming off their fifth straight win, 5-3 at Columbus on Tuesday. Malkin is sick right now. So you'll need to find out if you want Pittsburgh or even if you're on the Fay train, uh, what his status is. Uh, Jeff Carter is dealing with a lower body injury. Uh, both are close to returning at this point. And Will Butcher is out right now with a non-disclosed injury, a defenseman for uh, them, who was a defenseman for the Devils. Take it away for us here, C-Mac. Do you have any interest in Devils-Penguins? Yeah, I think this is just interesting. But I, I can't take the Devils. Just right now, the way they've been playing hockey. And this is a team that's really owned the Penguins. You know, they beat up on them last year. I think they've won five straight, uh, you know, in their house and at home. The Penguins, yeah, we were talking about on Tuesday, Jimmy. They had the great road trip. They have the game at home against Buffalo. I had their team total Tuesday. That's what I was looking at here, or just the straight over. These teams just are over right now. Uh, Penguins have been scoring a ton. Now, the Devils haven't been as much. So I was just kind of looking at the Penguins team total again in this matchup. I'm worried they did come home. It's not like a, a six-game trip didn't come home. Like I talked about, they had the home game. They went to Columbus. Now they're back. Uh, like I said, overs 5-0. and oh. uh, But there was some other stuff that a little, that little bit leaned to the under. So I'm going to stick with the Pens right now. Scoring. So give me their team total over three and a half. It was minus 125 on DraftKings, but whatever best price you have, you know, get it for me. Let's see. That's an interesting way of, of handling things. The Devils have been not keeping the puck out of their net, so I get it. Uh, Penguins here, uh, team total over three and a half minus 105 at Pinnacle. I love it. Penguins, team total over three and a half. They're almost dead last right now at four goals a game. Yeah. Uh, you know. Just been bad. Pittsburgh been playing better. And I've what I've loved so much about the, the Penguins has been their defense, how they've looked. Because they were looking soft early on. And they just kind of turned it on lately. Let's see how long this lasts. Because I don't know if this is something, you know, it, you talked about spurts. Is this maybe like a, a 20 game? Can, you know, can this get to the break maybe? And how well they play? Because they're just an older team. You know, yeah, like, I exactly. The Jersey team. And mm -hmm. when you have Sid on your team, your forwards play accountable defensive hockey that help out some of the offense involved. Sorry, the, some of the defensive issues involved with your defenders. Uh, Vincent Ramirez, thank you. Says, have a great week. Thank you. With a four ninety nine dollars dono to bless our action. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, my friend, that means a ton to us. Uh, I love it. I love the vibe in here. I love uh, – we put so much work into this car. We have so many great cappers coming on today's show. I really think we're going to have a great, great day. And thank you, Vincent, for sending that. Uh, C-Mac has his second uh, action on the board. Penguins team total over three and a half. That's available minus 105 right now. Pinnacle. We move on to 7 p.m. Eastern. Arizona Coyotes, 7, 6, and 2, 3, 4, and 2 on the road. At Columbus Blue Jackets, 4, 8, and 4, 3, 5, and 1 at home. The Coyotes are now in the marketplace uh, as a good team a better than average hockey team. And they're not that on the road. And we cleaned up when we, when they went to St. Louis and it was a pick them. And I, and I just, I was just, I couldn't possibly comprehend that. This is a young, talented hockey team and it's hard to win on the road and they are not ready to produce on the road. In saying that I could not back the blue jackets, even though it was the first thing I wanted to do. Uh -huh. Me I too. couldn't do it. I want to do it. I can't do it. But I'm telling you, 
follow the coyotes on the road and bet against them when the market is respecting them. Cause we haven't seen the market respect this hockey team in a long time. And they're filled with young talent. And I'm telling you, it's hard to win on the road. Uh, we got our guy true a lot fourth and one entertainment uh, nets over Miami uh, bam, double, double and Shea triple, double and OKC money line. I will copy and paste that. Thank you for, sharing your action with us. Uh, Billy Friedrich says, Merz Leakins confirmed in that I was thinking, you know, it was going to be Merz Leakins. Uh, so, and I know that Connor Ingram was supposed to be in that. So I thought there was a goaltending advantage. I just, I just can't, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, after losing six straight, Columbus is going to a win here. I, I just, I can't, I couldn't do it. Now with the lightning losing three straight, I'm betting that that stops in Chicago. They've been shut out twice in a row. And I'm, so there, there's certain times when you can have conviction to try and catch a falling knife. And even if I want to fade the Coyotes on the road, which is something that I will do, I can't do it here. Arizona's power play, 29.8%. Penalty killing, 75.4%. Connor Ingram's been fine, 5-1. and one. I mean, 2.87 goals against average, 9-11 save percentage. Whereas Leakins hasn't been great. I think part of it is the team in front of him, but 3.24 goals against average, 9-1 save percentage. Their power play has been abysmal. I mean, you point your finger at Johnny Hockey and then, of course, the Patrick Line injury, but Line is back. Uh, so, you know, now they have Jack Raslovic out for the Jackets. You know, Boone Jenner, uh, Jack Raslovic, you know, they're tough, tougher centers. And, and this is a team that's sort of devoid of that kind of toughness. Arizona comes in off its second loss in three games, 4-3 in overtime at Dallas on Tuesday. They're playing well. This is the fourth game of a five-game road trip. They head up to Winnipeg after this. Uh, Travis Dermott and Yusuf Valamaki, two defensemen, are out for the Yotes. Uh, uh-huh. And I... The first thing I wanted to do on this card was back Columbus, but I uh, cannot do it. We have the Coyotes here at minus 121. They opened up at minus 113, so it's moved eight cents in their favor. And then from a total standpoint here, we have uh, the Yotes, or this game at six and a half, minus 125 to the over. It opened up minus 120, so a five cent move to the over. Anything interest you here in this one, C Mac? Uh, jackets at home at Nationwide. Yeah, when I looked at this, you were talking about, I'm like, this seems like the spot to take the jackets. And it and kind of line, it's showing it right here. You know, it's plus 105, mm-hmm. plus 110. And this this could be the night I think they get maybe some scoring because that's been their problem here with the jackets. Like you talked about, man, Elvis is getting older and the people in front of him, like you just mentioned, the defensemen just haven't been great. And they seem to be giving up four to five goals every game. I don't know if that stops here. Uh, Arizona has been very good. Like how much does continue on the road, but everything to me, I had to take the over here. I just have to bank. One of these teams gets four or five goals. The other gets a couple. It's just cashed a ton in this rivalry, you know, five and oh, the last five versus the jackets Four and oh, the blue decks, the central seven and one, the four to six days, right? All this stuff, all the, uh, the crazy trends and shit. So give me the over six and a half here. We can get you that at minus 121. Can you beat that? Perfect. That's about right where I had it. Okay, 120. That at, that's available right now at Bet Online. CMAC on the over six and a half minus 121. Billy Friedrich says line A is back, which I think is a big factor. Yeah, it'll help them. And, and their power play is being anemic. So it should, you know, but I, I just, I'm not. Huh. I do not think the Coyotes should be even money against any team except you know, the sharks on the road, you know, uh, and then they should probably be favorites obviously, but, but I just, I I would like to fade them in these situations. I know they just play Dallas very tough. Let's move on. 8 PM Eastern Tampa Bay lightning and Chicago Blackhawks. Look, I know as well as you guys probably do that. I have a vividness bias that the Tampa Bay lightning are a good hockey team. And you're right. I'm dealing with it, but I have it. I don't care that Jonas Johansson is in goal. It's a, maybe it's going to cost me money here, but I can't and don't believe that I live in a world where Connor Bedard goes into Tampa and the Blackhawks have all their moms up in the stands and they stomp on the lightning in Tampa. Then the lightning go out on the road, get shut out in back to back games. I just, I can't. And what they're not going to show heart here. They're not going to fight back. They're not going to push back. They're not going to hit back. I came so close to doubling down on the first period, taking the first period minus a half. 
but I, I don't, I just, if it is one, one after one and the lightning win four one or something like that, I will just, it'll just, it, it'll bother me to, to such a, an extent that I was like, okay, just take the minus one line. Uh, I do not believe Mrazic is a nine twenty one save percentage goaltender. He's never proven he could do that over a season. And Tampa's power play at 30.2% compared to Chicago's power play at 10.9%. They've got to take advantage. And they've got to be angry. They have to be angry. Uh, Coaches are going to get fired. General managers are going to get fired. Players are going to get traded. Is that what they want? I don't think that's what they want. I think they want another run with this group. So uh, this this was a must bet. Connor Sheary is out, uh, which is, you know, I mean, he's a – decent bottom six guy but eric cernak has been out for the bolts we saw what happened to them in the playoffs over the last couple of years when cernak's not available he could return yeah. tonight the blackhawks followed okay. up their win at tampa with a 4-3 loss at florida on sunday so they have the mom's trip right saturday sunday they come home on monday they haven't played since the weekend and the lightning are champing so uh you know i, I took I, with confidence i i would say that this is the best bet on the board in NHL tonight. Now, can, am I trying to, am I ca- could I be trying to catch a falling knife? Uh, could I have a vividness bias on the talent of the lightning? All that can be true. So, you know, you could, uh, that you have, you could debate me on whether this is the best look on the board. The total is at six and a half minus one twenty seven to the over. Uh, they can't keep allowing the goals that have been coming in on them. Like they, you know, I know that Johansson's not very good, but they can't, keep doing this this is minus 179 this opened up at minus 182 there's been no movement uh you know this is a team that just got shut out in back-to-back games and just lost to this team so i i it's not like i think there's going to be a bunch of people running to the window to put their money down on the lightning so i'm on lightning minus one i got minus 119 on it uh the exact same numbers that are available right now take it away c-mac lightning blackhawks yeah so people for the chat but yeah vast he's a he's probably a week away the goaltending, you know, has hurt the Lightning. You know, they, they need him back, definitely. Yeah, and they've just looked a little bit slow and out of it. I don't blame you. You know, I've been talking about it didn't happen the other day where they lost to the Blues. I would like that early first period uh, you look with the Lightning. I think that's if you take him. I think they jump on this Blackhawk team, who until a week ago, Jimmy, just beat the shit out of this team consistently, you know, just would stomp on them regularly. It seemed like there would be five, two, six, one games when they would play. And there's plenty of guys out with the Blackhawks here. Uh, Taylor Hall, there's a few other de- defensemen that are out for them. I have to say, I, when you, I go through all everything here. I haven't bet yet. I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to take the over, I think, in the end. I know the juice is high in this. I just I don't see how any of these teams stop each other right now. <laughs> you know, with everyone out. Everyone playing. I think the Lightning get plenty of goals. I think the Blackhawks probably get a few. And I get, though, the other side why people like the Blackhawks. They're just – maybe they're catching a Lightning team that is just right now not very good. You know, they think they might have the better goalie Fury. right here. Yeah. <laughs> Kucherov going to sit around here with the Lightning team that's 6-6-4? Six, six, and four? I mean, Kucherov, we've seen what this guy – look. guy drinking a beer at the press conference with no shirt on. You think he's going to sit back and be a little bitch? I mean, they I, I, score today, though, at least. I, I The first period. I mean, when's the last? I'd have to look that up here after the show. And when, I mean, they back-to-back shutouts and what they've done after it. That's, I mean, has, have they been shut out back-to-back games in the last five I years? <laughs> so I was going to even look at that. Has that even fucking happened? <laughs> Wild. Uh, let's see what we can give you here. Uh, Pinnacle has this over six and a half minus one twenty seven, but we can beat that. Uh, Heritage has it at minus one twenty three. Bookmaker has it up to minus one thirty. The sharper books are moving this, you know, to the over. So uh, let's get CMAC in. CMAC over six and a half minus one twenty three. You know, I I don't like taking team totals with favorites, but. This is appealing here. Let's. I just like to see what the team total is uh, for this one uh, here quickly. Look at this team total. Uh, the I prefer to send this action in but the team total over three and a half minus one thirty five. I mean, there, I just don't see a world where they can win this three one. 
you know. Yeah, so, like, I, mean, I mean, like I would be shocked if that happened. Like it would be, you know, and it could, but it would be, you know, the odds of it. I would take it low. Connor Bedard, Deshaun mentioned. Yeah, how can you not? Everyone's cashing all over with it, you know, his props. So I get it. But shout out to everyone in the chat, especially everyone uh, in the green, the membership. Appreciate you yeah. guys. Great group. Great group rocking with us right now. Okay, so let's keep rolling. So I, this is to me the for me this is the best bet on the board. And I could, you know, I could add to it. I could take a first period. I could do. I could take a team total over. I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep it clean. I didn't bet more on this game than I bet on the other two games. Maybe I should have done that. You know, maybe I should have done that. You know, maybe maybe I'll add a little bit to it. Um, maybe I'll add a little bit to it. Maybe add. Okay, I think I should add. Why why wouldn't I? The more I talk about it, the more I like it. The the fact that they just came down to Tampa and beat them the way they did. I, I I'm gonna you know I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add. All right, let's move on. Next up for us at 9 p.m. Eastern, the Vancouver Canucks 11 3 1 6 3 0 on the road at the Calgary Flames 5 8 2 2 3 0 at home. We're at Scotia Bank, Saddle Dome, Calgary, Alberta. Casey DeSmith, who's been great as a backup, just solidifying that back end behind Demko because we know that Demko uh, hasn't been able to make it through a full season in a long time. The Smith 4 0 1, 2.67 goals against average, 922 save percentage. Markstrom has looked a little better of late, but, uh, you know, a little better is the best you're going to get out of him. Uh, thank you, Billy. Uh, one sports radio membership gifted by our guy, Billy Friedrich. And it is Yo Yo Mendez getting it. Great. I love seeing that. Love, oh, love yeah. seeing that. Uh, great stuff. Great job yesterday, DC Capper. Uh, so here we go. DeSmith, Markstrom, Vancouver power play at 33.3%. They're phenomenal power play. 75% penalty killing. Calgary, 14% power play, 88% penalty killing. Second half of back to back after defeating the Islanders 4 3 in overtime at home last night. Kuzmenko and Pius Suter are day to day, and Carson Soucy is out till Christmas. Too bad. He looked very good, you know, as a bottom defenseman. Uh, the Flames snapped their two game losing streak with a 2 1 victory at Montreal on Tuesday. You know, they're certainly not a team that I have any faith in. But you know, I've left a ton of money on the table, not backing the flame or the Canucks, and I'm not backing the Canucks here. Uh, the total opened up over six and a half minus one twenty five. It's now over six and a half minus one eighteen. Uh, you know, these teams don't like each other, and I don't know how the Canucks are going to keep mm -hmm. able to do it. And, and in the next game, I don't know how the Islanders are going to be able to. And again, now they play a Seattle team where both teams are coming off losing in overtime in games that they seemingly had a stranglehold on. Yeah. But, you know, and maybe you're looking at this line for Vancouver and saying it's a great line for them. Uh, but look at what Calgary's done. They, they opened up at minus 114. They got up to minus 140 at Pinnacle. I mean, that's just a huge move. Uh, if you want to get in the way of that move, you know, with a really good hockey team like the Canucks, you know, I get it. There's my guy Juan Ruiz in the house. Uh, Bankroll Spence says, can you get a membership on mobile? I can't. Remember if you can. I, I remember it was a problem at first, but I not well, sure yeah. fixed it. I can't remember here. Uh, but thank you guys for caring about that. It means a ton to us. Uh, so uh, line history wise, we did that. Total wise, we did that. Uh, I I don't I I don't want to back Calgary ever, and I don't want the Canucks in this spot. Take it away. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't want to back Calgary either. And, uh, you know, the Habs just didn't get it done on Tuesday in that close one. You know, this game is just the big rivalry that you made. You know this, Jimmy. You know this oh, yeah. between these two. It's been tough. And Calgary's kind of had a little bit, you know, an advantage, you know, the last five years or more. One thing, though, I guess moved that way. But how can you not? If you've been all betting the Canucks, how can you not? I know even on the back-to-back, -back, not want to take them. I mean, the goals, number one, just everything. The defense has been great. Hughes, everybody. that has just been excellent. So I get it. I, you know, I'm going to stay off in the end. But if I had a free bet or a little bit here, I'd, I'd still take the Canucks, even on the back-to-back -back of this plus money. Top three scorers in the NHL. I'm crazy. Pedersen, Miller. and Pedersen, Miller. Miller. It's wild. Absolutely wild. There's razor sharp picks in the house. Ghost Joker says Markstrom can't handle Canucks power play, but they're tired off back to back. This will be difficult, but lean Canucks. Yeah, I think that's well put. Uh, Fopatashi looking at the Quinn Hughes over shots on goal prop. All right, let's move on. Next up for us, as we kind of you know mentioned, two teams that are coming off having strangleholds in the hockey game, having two goal leads in the hockey game, and losing in overtime. 
and they both did that on the road. I mean, that's a killer. Islanders five, six, and three, two, three, zero on the road. I might have done that before the game was over. Uh, they might be five, seven, three now, but Kraken five, eight, and three, two, five, and zero at home. Where Climate Pledge in Seattle, Washington. Uh, Varlamov, who's been outplaying Sorokin, although Sorokin was great last night, forty-three saves. Uh, 2.04 goals against every time, 47 percent two shots. Grubauer, 3.60, 3.37 goals against every day, 91 percent He's not good. And I could understand when Nutflush sent me a message and he was concerned that uh, Joy De- Decord was in net. And I get it. Uh, Grubauer is uh, – we know he's a sieve. When anyone else comes in net, you're not sure. And Grubauer wasn't always a sieve until he put on a Kraken jersey. Uh, Islanders power play at 20 20- Percent penalty killing 71.2 percent. It's shocking to see an Islander team with Pulak and Pelik uh having a penalty killing so weak, especially with Horvat winning faceoffs. Like it just makes no sense. Seattle power play 23.1 percent penalty killing 73.1 uh, percent. Too bad that Anders Lee uh could never come back from that injury and be the star that it looked like he was becoming. It's yep, he's not the same. It's too bad. Uh, this has got the Islanders at minus 101. You know, it's a wash with both teams being tired and having to travel across a border and all of that stuff. Islanders open up plus 103. They're now minus 101. Uh, this is very coin flippy. I thought Seattle looked really good last night. They're healthy other than Burakovsky, and they looked, they looked really good. They deserve to win that hockey game. The total here it opened up at under 6, minus 107. It's now under 6 at minus 113. Like, I don't know what to bank on here. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Where is there an edge? Uh, this just seems uh, – okay, no, here. Okay, the edge is Varlamov over Grubauer. Yeah, that, just that, a goalie. Yeah. That's valid. So I, you know, I but I don't. I, I just, How do you want? Why do you want the Islanders? I really? don't. I just, yeah. I just trying to find where is there an advantage? I guess the Kraken forwards over the Islander forwards, maybe with speed. Yeah, I, I just, I this is just coin flippy to me, and I can't move on it. Uh, are you moving on, C-Mac? I'm not. The offense is just dreadful. And you talked about the penalty kill being whatever it is, 29th, 30th. It's just, wow. It's shocking. it's weird to see. It's shocking. And does anything change with this Islanders team? I don't know. I mean, maybe they're a 500 team. I don't know if they're going to get back to being, you know, where they were, you know, three, four years ago. They do have the better goal like you talked about. I, I, you know, I look at the under. I don't love it. Both these teams back to back, but they both really can't score. But you talked about Seattle; they did look sharp. And I want that game last night. Giving it up, what a kind of a backbreaker. But maybe that's big for an Oilers team who's just been <laughs> dorm. A win like that, where they come back, and maybe that can get them going. I don't think so. I still think they have problems in it, you know. But I thought that was a that was a really big win for them in OT. Uh, in the fourth there. But in the end, I got to be off here. I can't take either of these teams on back-to-back. Yeah, at this point, there's no additions uh, here. Uh, obviously, the unders have been hurting me. I- I'm not going to stay away from them in NHL. There are spots where I want to attack them. But but I like my card here, especially if I add a little bit to that lightning action. Next spot, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Florida Panthers, 10-4-1, 4-3-1 on the road at the LA Kings, 8-3-3, 1-3-3 at home. Crypto.com Arena, Los Angeles, California. Bobrovsky has been decent. Uh, and Talbot has been way better than we expected. Can he carry that over th- through a whole season? That's uh, up to anybody's guess at this point. But like unlikely, Florida. But the team in front of them is really good. That helps. Florida power play nineteen point two percent, penalty killing seventy five point five percent, and Montour and Ekblad are very close to returning. Uh, what they have done to go ten four and one without their best two defensemen is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the Kings power play eighteen point six percent, penalty killing eighty seven point two percent. They're just a complete hockey team. Uh, Florida comes in off its fifth straight win, 5-3 at San Jose on Tuesday. The Kings have been off since Saturday. So the Kings have been sitting stewing over these back-to-back home losses. Because remember what happened before those back-to-back home losses. They went into Vegas and beat the defending Stanley Cup champions and almost to pick them. They were barely dogs. Uh, So they lose 4-3 in overtime to the Penguins on the following night. Uh, The Penguins had all the sharp action on them. It took overtime to beat the Kings. Then the Flyers come in and beat them. Uh, Victor Arvidsson remains out. Uh, This is a... Great spot for the Kings. Now, do they come out a little sloppy in the first period because they haven't played, you know, in a while? I mean, that's legitimate, but come late in the game. And are these Florida Panthers, did they not party in L.A.? Maybe they didn't. 
I mean, I can't, I don't know what they did, but it's obviously yeah. a possibility. Uh, this total is at six and a half. It opened up minus 125, now minus 130 to the over, five cent move to the over. And from a money line perspective, here we have. Uh, sorry, it's gonna just take a second to refresh. Uh, and, and Billy Friedrich says, Why is this line so low? You know, I can explain it here. It's uh, I get nervous when I can't explain it. Uh, look, the like, like C Mac mentioned, the Kings have played seven games at home and have won in regulation once. <laughs> yeah, so that's why it's so low. The Panthers have won five straight. That's why, and I'm fine with it. The Kings open up at minus 126. Right now, they're minus 123. Uh, they got up to minus 135. The early action last night was on them. That's sharp action that I believe. And then I think they're going to take care of business, and I bet them on the minus one line. Uh, Slatsy says Montour targeting Friday versus Ducks to return. If Montour is healthy, if he goes a week and plays, then we got to bet futures on the Panthers immediately because Reinhardt's playing out of his mind. This team has shown that they can win the big games. They, they went to the dance, and they partied a little too hard at the dance. Now they got to go to the dance and be all business at the dance. They're capable of all that. I'm on the Kings minus one here, though. Take it away, C-Mac. Final sp- oh, no, one more spot after this. Yeah, I get I think this is like the game to watch, and I can't wait for tonight, you know, between these two. Because I, in the end, I think this is going to be a 3-2, 4-3 hockey game. And maybe the Kings come out like you talk about rest and dominant, but they've been very, very tight before. Man, I love how these match. I was talking with Pete about the – the Panthers, you know, that's moved up a little bit, Jimmy, but their penalty kill was low. They both and their power play, they both moved up to around 20th. Mm-hmm. But I was telling him, I think they've been one of the better five on five teams in the league, especially with what you're talking about without Montour. So I think this is just a good old, good one. I get why you're on the Kings. And I think they win this game, like I said, 4 3 3 2, and just a good old one. And right now, I'm just, I don't know if I have my money on it. Uh, I'm going to watch. I'm confident. Uh, Bankroll Spencer says, think we can get a better line on the Kings closer to game time? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I think that we're fortunate to get this line. It should be bet now. And then may- maybe you'll get by a few sec- few cents. But I I think it, uh, this, is a gr- this is a great line. Now, I took them on minus one myself. You guys can handle it however you want to handle it. But uh, I like it. Final game on the board before we get into NFL, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, the St. Louis Blues. 8 5 and 1, 2 3 and 1 on the road at San Jose Sharks, 2 13 and 1, 2 6 and 1 at home, San Jose, California. Uh, Mackenzie Blackwood's been pretty good. I know he's got a 4.02 goals against average, but it's like, you know, playing in front of the Sharks is like playing in the 80s with small pads on. And 898 save percentage, you know, it's not great, but he's been okay. Uh, Biddington, 5 4 and 1, 2.27 goals against average, 930 save percentage. He's been really good. St. Louis has no power play, 7.7%. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, that number should improve, but Krug is just. Nowhere to be found. A seventy-six point three percent penalty killing. San Jose sixteen point three percent power play, sixty-nine point five percent penalty killing. So um, let's pull up the line history here for this one. And I'll tell you, my first thought was to take the Sharks first period, uh, just because I and I and I'm going to want the Sharks first period often. But Anthony Duclair is sick. I cannot yeah. believe he's five foot eleven. He plays like he's six three. He's ready to be. You know, he's he's a perfect you know, forward for a team that can win a cup. Uh, and he's sick. I don't know if he's going to play that. Logan Courtier keeps getting pushed back with his lower body injury. You have Matt Banning and Jacob McDonald both on IR. They could come back soon. Uh, I'm not sure if they're able to, but this is a really weak defense. And when you take pieces out of a weak defense, uh, you have Oscar Lindblom, uh, you know, undisclosed out until November 20th. So I can't. When Logan Couture comes back and Duclair's in yeah. and the market hasn't corrected themselves, I'm going to start betting Sharks first periods, especially at home. Uh, Blues coming off their third straight win, 5-0 at home over Tampa on Tuesday. They've got to be fat and happy. They're traveling across North America. It would be This is a perfect spot to fade them, but I can't quite do it. This is the perfect spot for the Sharks first period, man. Three three straight losses coming. They, you know, they were at home on Tuesday, so they have that continuity. They're comfortable. I wish I could do it. I can't uh, take it away here. C Mac Blue Sharks. You can't right now. You just uh, Blues are playing better. Uh, they own these Sharks, like you said. With Couture's back, a few others. Here, they're just riddled. And Blues are healthy, feeling good about themselves. Finally scoring a little bit, Jimmy. So like free bet. It's just massive number. I get it. Blues puck line here is what I would be on. Uh, 
you know, I haven't bet it, but I think they just go in there. The Sharks are just, until they get a little healthy, they can't stop anything and they can't put anything in the net right now. It's just not been good. So, you know, I just think you look at Blues or Pass in this game. I hear you, but you, you like, historically, this is a great time to fade a team. Five oh, yeah. home over Tampa, and then you head out on the road and play the worst team in the league. Uh, if they were a little bit healthier, and it's shown in the flashes, and usually, yeah, it's the full game, it, it's not always been uh, easy, but the first period, I don't mind that. Look, I think we just wait. They're just too injured right now. They're just And they're just a bad hockey team. Fuck. I wish I could do it, man. Let me just – um just i let me i just we're gonna move on to football here but let me just uh very very quickly take a look at the lines i wish i was able to god i wish i was able to do it i i would like to put my money where my mouth is because it's one thing saying that this is a bad spot for st louis it's another thing when you actually bet that they're not going to come out hard i mean that's when i mean i can say anything who gives a fuck but if i can bet it then then it matters. Hurdle, Zetterland, Eklund, Duclair, they have in the lineup. But I know if, if he was healthy, it'd be different. Uh, Grandlin, Kunin, Hoffman, who's such a bum, Nico Sturm and Zadina. That should be an okay line. LeBanc, they've tried to get rid of him. And then you have your your top defensive pairs, Mario Ferraro and Ty Emerson. Okay. Fuck it. I'll just put that away. Okay, so let's review all NHL. The only thing I'm thinking of doing, I like my card a lot tonight. The only thing I'm thinking of doing is adding to my lightning action. But I've got three bets. I've got the Sens minus one, C-Max on that as well, and the uh, JPZ's on it as well, and the spreadsheet play today is the Senators minus 128. Uh, Knights, Canadians, we stayed off. C-Max on the Penguins team total over 3.5 minus 105. He's on the over 6.5 in Coyotes Blue Jackets. He's on the over 6.5 in Lightning Chicago. I'm on Lightning minus one. I believe that's the best bet on the board. And it's, you know, to say that about a team that's being shut out in back-to-back games is not easy. Uh, Canucks, Flames, we are off. Islanders, Kraken, we are off. And I'm on the Kings minus one. So there. Real we, quick. Go, yeah. I would take the under, too, in, the, in that Blue-San Jose game. I just think it would be like a 4-1 game. Three nothing. I, I would lean that way. I mean, I mean I'm a little interested in it. Uh, Slatsy says uh, Thomas and Bucci uh, plus a half point, a parlay at plus 142. Deshaun G saying Robert Thomas, power play point, free money. I mean, their power play is sitting at 7%, Deshaun. Um, it's, yeah. you know, it's just, I mean, it uh, was worse, I guess, but still. It was at yeah. 3. It got down to 2.6%. Yeah, last week. Yeah. Uh, Ricky Levine, ready to get to work, says Kings. Jimmy, get that cash. I like it. Uh, and says uh, Bengals, 1-23 and on the road at night, last 25. Jesus, really? That's that's crazy. Wow. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. They, don't, they haven't played a m- bunch of night games. That's wild. All right, uh, let's go. And uh, Billy Frank says Sharks 3-5 to five to the under at home. Blues are 1-4 one and four and 1 to the under on the road. Wow, that might be a really sharp look. All right, let's move on to NFL. We have C-Mac. C-Mac will also be joining us here on NFL Pub Hub this Sunday. We haven't had him since week three. We're excited about having him back in business for us. I was supposed to send all those invites this morning, but I was a little overwhelmed. But uh, I'll have him up here shortly uh nfl thursday night football we got a beauty on our hands we've already heard from stacks justin mackley stacks play today boyd anytime touchdown at plus 205 we've heard from wine time and tory coker they are both on the under in bengals ravens at mnt stadium in baltimore maryland 56 fahrenheit clear two miles per hour the biggest issue for me in this football game is the bengals front seven it's a problem with hendrickson uh, out, uh, it's a huge problem, uh, enormous problem because you're already dealing with Hubbard out, and you know these teams just aren't that deep to lose that. Um, you know, and Hendricks has the hyperextended knee, so I don't I don't see how he could possibly. He's definitely not. Uh, G Martinez says Hendricks and eight out. Um, so. Uh, God, because they were saying they were wondering how many weeks he was going to be out with 24 hours ago. Let's see, uh, Hendrickson ain't out. He returns to practice ahead of the Ravens game. So a huge development for the Bengals. Yeah, it's probable. I wow. Know. Yeah, moving around. Well, look, there he is running around. Going fast on several individual drills. 
Um, because Hubbard is out. I mean, if they don't have him, I mean, if you if if it's Cam Sample, Joseph Osai, and Miles Murphy, they're going to lose the football game, and the Ravens are going to put up points. If Hendrickson can play on a hyperextended knee, you know, it's very very important. Uh, Joe Yurkovich on the Ravens money line. Uh, DJ hundred grand on says Ravens all day, and I have moved towards the Ravens. And and I don't like fading the Bengals. Uh, I haven't bet the Ravens yet, but I've certainly, I'm certainly on the way. Now hearing that Hendrickson, oh Von Polo, going to be at the game. Oh, I love it, Von Polo. Uh, Al Terry nice. says if you want to take the Bengals bet, win the division at plus four hundred. That makes sense now with the Deshaun Watson injury. That's that's a really smart way of of handling it. Uh, so let's take a look at the line history and the cash flow here for this one. Uh, big, big Thursday nighter. Mike M will be hosting our live stream right here. We have Baltimore now juiced at the three and a half. They weren't. This opened up at four. So it opened up at four on Sunday night. And it lasted there at four until when? Uh, lasted there at four for, it took 18 minutes before it went to three and a half. So clearly at that point, you know, sharp action on the Bengals. Uh, the plus three and a half with the bet. As soon as it went to three and a half, started moving back to the Ravens, and the Ravens got juice. So, uh, and it's come back each time. So the, the you know we've had double digit juice on the Ravens, uh, but it's come back each time. Uh, last night, the juice was on the Bengals plus three and a half at minus one ten. Uh, now it's juice to the Ravens, and I'm interested in them. And maybe by the end of this, I move on them. This total is at forty six. Minus 110 to the over. This opened up at 44 and a half, so it's only gone up. Uh, I love it. Von Polo and wife going to be tailgating before the game. I love it. Uh, it's going to be great. Deshaun G giving us final score 27-24. Christopher Comantini also on the over. And Trans Canada in the house. Uh, and BJ says, everything I said yesterday, Cash, is a clear Raven spot. Reverse line movement, and the Bengals are a public dog. I've seen minus four in some spots. Hammer the Ravens. That's another thing. That was why, you know, I, you know, because I'm in a pool with my mom. We talked about that yesterday, and you know, and I was like, look, now they're not as public as they were yesterday. Yesterday, when, when I was talking to my mom, it was 73% of the tickets and like 78% of the cash was on the Bengals. So that's coming down. So money's coming in on the Ravens. That's why the Ravens are being juiced now. 64% of tickets, 68% of cash. You know, I'm starting after talking more and more about this. I'm, I am moving uh, much closer to betting the Ravens. Uh, we have 59% of the tickets, 62% of the cash on the over. Two very good teams coming off surprising home losses. Bengals had their four-game winning streak snapped in a 30-27 home loss to the Texans. The Bengals' defense got gashed. They couldn't make stops. 544 total yards is what the Texans put up, 28 first downs. This Bengals' pass defense is very suspect, 25th in the league, allowing 247.8 yards per game. Texans had 356 yards passing. So then the question is, can the Ravens do the same against them? Uh, Ravens are ranked 20th in the NFL. They put up 207.8 passing yards a game. Uh, they've only averaged 185 over the past three games. So, you know, T. Higgins injured. Uh, Tyler Boyd came up huge last game. I know a lot of people are expecting him to do the very same thing here. That always makes me nervous. The The Bengals can't run the ball. Uh, now, both teams have player-wise kind of pedestrian skill at the running back position. Uh, the Cincinnati ranks 30th. Long, uh, uh, Cincinnati struggles running the ball. They're last. They, they run 74.8 yards per game. But they also uh, struggle defending the run. They're 30th. So they have the worst rushing and then the 30th run defense. You know, I, it, uh, I'm i going to bet the Ravens. Yeah, okay. I, I, I think I've said enough here uh, about the Bengals. We know who the Ravens are, and they look good until there was some mistakes, some passing when they didn't need to, not trusting the run. Uh, maybe it's hard to trust the run against the Browns. Uh, take it away. I'd love to hear your thought process here, C-Mac. Take it away. Bengals at the Ravens. Let, hit that since you were just on it, Jimmy, The how bad the numbers are. It's just been weird because, like, the Buffalo and San Francisco, you know, they give up 17 and 18 in that game. They, and they're probably going to need turnovers here, the Bengals' defense. Some of it skewed, I think, from early on with the blowout losses. The early one with the Browns, the Tennessee game, it's just like it was off. I, I don't know. Like, but it's it's clearly that's the rankings. They're not very good when you go through it with the Bengals, especially defensively when all these numbers and they can't run it. They're 
let's get to the Ravens after the blow. You know, they blow that lead. This is where I would be back with them. I would only look at them first quarter to first half. I would not be on the Ravens full game with over the hook. I don't trust this football team. They beat up on some other teams. They did have that good game against the Lions. But there was a team like it happened last week. I, I just don't trust them. Not in a division game like this. It would just have to be a three or less for me to even look the Ravens way. I look Ravens early. Full game like Mike's put it in there. Joe Burrow, I like to have him in a back pocket. I know the defense isn't great, but I think he can keep this game somewhat close. This has moved up. I don't buy it. If this goes over, the first game they had this year went over. Jimmy, and I think it's a short week, which I don't love. It's obviously a primetime game. But I think the defense has come to play. And I hate that they're banged up. Like we just went through some of that. But I'm on the under in this game. Uh, just give me the best 46, 46 and a half, whatever it is right now. Give me the under here. Um, in a division game like this, I want the under flat out. And if I had it on the side, I'd take the Bengals full game. And I don't really love that. And if you love the Ravens, I would just look early. They've just been so good fucking first half. It's been just crazy. And I've probably been on them like four times. I haven't even been on them a crazy amount, the Ravens. But I've been on them like four or five times. They've cashed every time first half. I don't trust them full game. In the end, I think it's a field goal type game. Uh, very well could be. I mean, that, that's why the line went from four to three and a half immediately. Hmm. Uh, let's get you on that under. Right now, 41% of tickets, 38% of cash on the under. I just um, uh, and I might have props, Jimmy. I was I'm still really going through the the props on this game a little bit and quite well, let's gotten look, anywhere. Man. Get you the we can get you that hook, can't we? Yes, uh, Will Hill at forty six and a half. Uh, Pinnacle's moved it to forty six. Heritage at forty six and a half. Too. So we can get you the under forty six and a half at minus one oh eight. So C Mac under forty six and a half. Minus 108. Yeah, the Ravens' second halves have been confusing. I, they have. And, you know, if we didn't see the Texans go in and just, you know, dominate the Bengals' defense, then, you know, I would would I be talking like this? You know, not. Uh, Von Polo on Ravens' first half. Uh, Al Cervix says Bengals are a wounded and cornered animal life or death tonight. You know, cause I would like to take the Bengals win total over after they lose tonight, but do they lose by three points? That's the concern. Uh, if they lose by three points and they lose, but I lose money in the process. I mean, there was a couple of blowouts. These would be good. Bengals have won. And earlier this year, 27, 24 last year, Ravens won. They were at home October 9th, 1917. You know, I just full game. I wouldn't want the Ravens. That's all with over the three. Uh, yeah, I, I'm close. I'm close to moving on the Ravens. Uh, but I can understand. I mean, if, if, would you be confident, you know, if, if you're up six or it, would you be confident if you're up eight or nine late and the Bengals have the ball driving with two or three minutes left or something like that? I mean, no, I mean, it's, I get yeah. it. I, I'm I do lean to the Ravens, and uh, and I do you not want to look at first half, Jimmy. Is that just something you don't want to do with the Ravens? Not really. No, I get it. I mean, if you're they, they've been covering the first half, they haven't been covering full games. Uh, but you have Trey Hendrickson with the hyperextended knee uh, now going to play. Uh, he has to play because he probably looked around at who is going to be in that front group without him and Hubbard. And what happens if he goes down? I mean, I just. Uh, are we really going to sit back and expect Boyd to be a monster just because he was last week? Uh, whenever people bet props based on what happened the week before, I mean, I deem it as an unsuccessful spot. Uh, Fernando Mendoza betting the Bengals. Uh, Dabby Cap says Ravens have covered the first half for him three weeks in a row. So, uh, and Al Servic has Ravens minus three and a half. I'd like to hit it again in a better line, but line's not moved at all. So, waiting for in game action. Maybe that's the best way to do it, waiting for in-game action. Uh, I'll see if I get in on the Ravens at this point. Uh, C-Mac is in on the under 46 and a half. Uh, you know, Zari says, who's going to cover Chase? Uh, you know. Ravens defense has been great. 
until last week. I, some games that, you know, in the NFL, you have a few that are shootouts, but the numbers for them are really, really good. Are they that good? Are they really a top three defense? Top five? I don't know, but the numbers show right now. K Wolf says double chase. I had all this love for Chase playing on Sunday, you know, when he had the back injury all week, but now he has to play again, you know, three days later, four days later. I mean, it's not, uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Uh, so I have not moved on it yet. I'm getting closer though. I'm getting closer and I'll have to sit with it longer. C Max on the under 46 and a half. Uh, C Mac, great job, man. Uh, love capping NHL with you. Let's have ourselves a giant, giant day. You guys have Miami, Louisville, uh, going on Michigan, Maryland going on at the same time as uh, the Louisville game. Uh, w- which one are you more excited about? Louisville, Miami. Yeah, good. Okay, good. Because uh, that's yeah. going to be a fun live stream for you and Dabby Cab on Saturday. You'll have uh, be rolling with us on NFL Pub Hub on Sunday. And then you have our most popular show, Hitting the Books, on Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern. So you got a lot ahead of you. Thank you for making time for us today. It means a ton. Uh, C Mac, uh, thank you. Any last words for the Capri support in the show before we move on? No, shout out to all you guys. I know you have a huge uh, rest of the day. Let's just keep rolling. Ricky, Nasty Nate. There's my guy, G Martinez, Bank, Rohara Williams, Al. What's up, my dude? Good to see you. Robert Franklin, Joe Yurkovich. What's up, my guy? Uh, let's get it. I got more shit to do. I got college basketball to get to. Uh, I love it. Let's get there it. He is making it, making it a Mac Daddy in the house. Robert Franklin on Keaton Mitchell over 37. Rushing yards. Leal, my my friend Leal said it, laughing at me for calling Keaton Mitchell pedestrian. You're right. What kind of what kind of he's a, obviously a superstar if his rushing prop is at 37. All right, let's move on to college football. We got Boston College Eagles, Pittsburgh Panthers, and our next guest coming to us from Dallas, Texas, the star of Medicaid Mondays, right here on Pub Sports Radio, as well as our college football live stream. Please welcome Mr. Dabra Kadabra to the show. Dabby, how are you? Man, I'm good. I'm ready to be here, man. You guys in the chat, it's good energy going on today, man. Harold, Al, Nate Dog, everybody. I saw the memberships. That shit means the world. You know, just being here, that means the world. Do us a favor. Jimmy won't ever ask this. Hit the like button and share it. That little share button helps a ton. Bring another couple people in here for us. You guys are the best. I love it. We got a lot of work to do, Dabby Cab. We have college football and college basketball. So let's get right after it. Thursday, November 16th, 7 p.m. Eastern, Boston College Eagles, 6-4, and 3-3 three and three in the ACC. The Pittsburgh Panthers, 2-8, and 1-5 and in the ACC. We're at Acrisure Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 58 Fahrenheit, clear, 4 miles per hour. Get into the line history here for this one. We have Pittsburgh minus three at minus 103. They opened up at minus two. So we've had a one point move over there. And there's Billy Friedrich gifting another pub sports radio membership. What a guy you are, Billy. And BJ getting it. I love seeing that. Thank you guys. Uh, so, BJ, you're now welcome to come to our Cappers Contest show right after this, where we're 28, 20, and two. Uh, I sent Jose all of the numbers yesterday 28, 20, and two. And we are. Now tied for 789th out of about 5,500. Top 100 get paid. We're three and a half points out of the top 100. I can't wait for this. Uh, Remmo says lean, uh, Breeders' Cup, sorry, lean Boston College, but trappy as fuck, says Remmo. Let's talk about the spot here. So we just did the line history from the spread perspective. Let's get into the total. From a total perspective, we are sitting here at 46. 46, it opened up at 47 and a half so we've dropped a point and a half and when we get over to the cash flow here in this one we have on the spread 50 50 on the tickets but 74 percent of the cash on pittsburgh interesting and then total wise 72 percent tickets 90 percent cash on the under and it's dropped a point and a half boston college had their five game winning streak snapped in a 48 22 loss at home to virginia tech is two and a half point dogs uh castellanos castellanos uh, couldn't pick up uh, couldn't do anything uh, he looked awful he couldn't understand what defenses were doing. Uh, 10 of 20 for 110 yards and a touchdown and got picked off twice. They allowed Tech to put up 600 yards, 600 to 262 they're out game. Now, we know they run the ball with authority, but what happened against Tech? I mean, everything was – it was just confusing, you know. Uh, 
and they're bad defending the run. Uh, and Tech just ran all over them, 363 yards and four touchdowns. Pitt comes in off its fourth straight loss, 28-13 at home to Syracuse, four and a half point favorites. I mean, they lose at home to Syracuse. Uh, VU 13 and 22 for 161 yards in the touchdown and a pick, uh, shut out in the second half. It was ugly and awful. Take it away for us here. Dabby cab, Boston college, Pittsburgh Panthers. You know, I'm, I'm in the same boat as a lot of people in the chat here right now. A lot of people in the chat are saying, you know, they, they, they like uh, Boston college just haven't got there probably on the money line. Also. I mean, I, I, if I, if I bet this today, which I might, it's going to be Boston College plus the points and uh, a little bit on the money line. I mean, Pitt's only covered three games all season. Um, you know, and one of those games was uh, against Florida State where they were a 20, 20 and a half point under or 20 and a half point dog. So, I mean, take that for what it's worth. And then one of the other ones was that miracle win over Louisville. Um, but I'm telling you if, you, if you take it out, you know, if you zoom out and look at the whole big picture, I mean, Pittsburgh's played what? One good game this whole season? Um, you know, and BC is a different story all around. Uh, they're going to make a bowl game. Um, they have some respectable wins on their on their schedule here, including three in the ACC. Um, and with Pitt, the way, you know, they're rotating quarterbacks, uh, they haven't been able to find the answer here. Um, you know, and their guys got more interceptions and touchdowns right now. So I, I just, it's Boston College or nothing for me. Pitt's, um, the, Pitt is the only team in the ACC that's averaging less than 20 points per game. I mean, their offense is sputtering to say the least. They cannot, they cannot get it going. So this is Boston College or nothing. I agree. Well, I, I, because they just got destroyed by Virginia Tech. I, from an X's and O's standpoint, I would say that you'd want to back them bouncing back, but with this market putting this horrific Panthers team that's one in five in the ACC as a favorite, I mean, it just, it's, it's so... fishy. It's fishy. It's, that's what it is. The reason I haven't bet this is, is it's fishy. Honestly, I would have put this game in a pick them if I made the line. I'm telling you, if, if Boston college wasn't coming off, getting destroyed, I'd be all over pit all over them. This would this and, and this I already this was one of my shortlisted games, but I I just I I can't fade a team that just got destroyed and embarrassed. Uh, Justin McElvey as a big part of it says senior night in the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, so uh, I'm off of this as well uh, because I, I'm not I'm not going to go up against these market moves that are clear, where they're at they're putting a six and four team that's 500 in the ACC against a two and 18, one and five in the ACC as a dog off, you know, opening up their lines or opening up their arms to anybody who wants to bet Boston college. So I'm just, I'm not going to do that, but I also don't want to fade a team that just got embarrassed. Uh, Zari says Pittsburgh lost to Syracuse last week and they only threw eight times. Uh, so, and says uh, Boston college doesn't need to throw. Uh, Okay, and, and uh, North Henry says the book's going to put this at Boston College minus two and a half. Same people betting Boston College will want Boston College. Uh, yeah, I look. I'm 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 not going to have a ton of action unless we get a, a college basketball stuff. And you guys have your looks here, and you you come in five and zero. Oh, you and Mikey M combined. So I, I'm I'm going to move past this. Uh, I I do I guess the look to the under makes sense. Uh, they're going to these quarterbacks are feeble through the air. They're going to be running the ball. Pittsburgh is going to be running the ball against this porous Boston College rush defense. So I guess the under is pretty clear. You know, you have 72% of the tickets and 90% of the cash on the under. I've been trying so hard to stay away from totals in college football and, and unders. They've been hurting me, but this one seems pretty clear. What do you think about taking the under here? Oh, you're muted, my man. Okay, we'll get you plugged in here. Uh, yeah, you're, okay. Why don't you? Uh, no, uh, why don't you try unplugging and uh, and coming back, uh, coming back in? We'll get you, uh, get you right here. Uh, I think the under makes sense. Is it all going to be just running the ball? Huh. Uh, Robert Frank says pit minus three probably because last home game and senior night. Uh, Robert Frank looking at the under forty five and a half. I. Think that the uh, king of all mutes. <laughs> you call him that name? Let's see him. Dabby? No. Okay. 
All right, uh, no worries. Uh, don't worry. Um, you know what we can do is um, we can save best bets until uh, Cab's mic's right, and maybe we can move on to college basketball and get up, um, get Mikey M jumping with us here. Uh, or I could give my first spot on. Uh, Billy Frieder could read lips. He said, "What the fuck?" That was what the what was the Billy Frieder lip reading here. Um, if you want to give us a you thumbs up, you, oh here we go. We Debbie Cab going in a different. One, let's let's give a, you know, uh, let's give Cab one more try and then let's go. Is it working? Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're in the shit's sitting here on green and I didn't touch it. So for everybody okay. that likes to joke about with me with my mic, sometimes it's me. That time it was not me. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> what did you think about this under here? Uh, it's starting to become more and more appealing. Man, at Pittsburgh, like I said, they're the only team in the SEC that's averaging less than 20 points per game. Uh, both of these teams are going to run, 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 run. Um, yeah, it's 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 under or passed in Boston College or passed. I really like what uh, Northender said, though, because the people on Boston College, and they'd still be on Boston College with the two and a half probably. So that was an interesting thought there. I think the under makes a ton of sense. They're just going to be running the ball nonstop. Running yeah, under. Non-stop. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, the under is becoming very appealing. I'm trying to cut them out, but I I think I move on this uh, under here. All right, uh, let's roll on to best bets here in college football. Let's uh, set that up. Let's move the Boston College pit uh, sign out, uh, Jose, so we can set this up because we'll be cutting this out. So let's do this again. We move on to NCAA football best bets with Dabby Cab here. It is Thursday, November 16th, and these Thursday videos this is our fourth video together, Dabby Cab. It's been magic for me. I'm 6 and 0. Oh, Hell so yeah. I've gone 2 and 0 oh on all three of our videos thus far. 6 and 0 oh on Thursday Best Bets. And for those of you guys watching, it's something that Pete Loshak's talked about so often because my very best looks are on the Wednesday show, and these are the second best looks. And Pete always talks about how his second best looks hit at a higher rate than his best looks. And that's been happening here. So let's get right to work. Uh, Dabby Cab, you have four spots and I have two spots. And you get us started with a big one. 2.30 p.m. Eastern. We talked about this game yesterday with Dave Rogers. Number two ranked Utah Ute, 7-3, and 4-3 and three in the Pac-12. But number 17 ranked Arizona Wildcats, 7-3, and 5-2 and two in the Pac-12. Arizona Stadium in Tucson, Arizona. At this point, we have 73 Fahrenheit showers, 8 miles per hour. I'll do an update on the weather after uh, Dabby breaks down what his look is on this one. Let's get into the line history here for this spot popping off at 2.30 p.m. And we have the total sitting at 45. This opened up at 45. No movement at all. No movement at all. And from a point spread perspective here, move over here. From a point point spread perspective, we have Arizona minus one, minus 106. Uh, they opened up minus one and minus 108. So we've had, just had no movement whatsoever on all of this. From a cash flow perspective here, uh, this giant Pac-12 game, uh, we have 39% of the tickets and 87% of the cash on the over, and it's not moving. On the spread, you have 66% of the tickets and 82% of cash on Arizona, and it's not moving. Money line, 67% of tickets, but just 49% of the cash. On Arizona, so you have some some bigger bets on the money line placed on the Utes. Uh, Utah comes in off its second loss in three games, 35-28 at Washington. It's nine and a half point dogs. I mean, we talk about how different their defense looks on the road than it does at home. Uh, Arizona comes in off its four straight win, 34-31 at Colorado. Is eight point favorites, and Jonah Coleman uh, just went off, 179 yards running, uh, rushing against that Buffalo's run defense. This is a much tougher defense to run on. Take it away, Dabby Cab. We heard yesterday on our best bets, Dave Rogers on the over 44 and a half. What is your plan here for Utes Wildcats? Okay, we've lost you again. Our, our you said the cash was pretty heavy on Arizona, and we haven't, uh, it hasn't moved at all, right? Well, it's different from spread and money line. On the spread, the, the bets are on Arizona. On the money line, because, uh, you, you know, if you're making big bets, why would you take a plus one when you could have no vig to worry about? So on the money line, the bigger bets are on the Utes. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, Arizona with their four straight win, like you said, I mean, this has been a strong stretch. Um, just a really strong stretch. Five and two record in conference play right now. Uh, you know, against Colorado, they trailed in that game 14-7 after the first quarter. Um, they were down 24-17 at half. 
Um, and 31, 24 after three quarters before that fourth quarter where they put up 10 points rallied and earned the win. Um, you know, on the year, the Wildcats here, 25th in the nation passing offense. Uh, they're putting up 280.2 yards per game uh, while they're 67th in rushing offense, 157.7 yards per game on the season. Um, Arizona's 41st in scoring in all of college football. Um, they're averaging 31.1 points per game. That's, um, you know, up there. Like I said, 39th in scoring defense, allowing 20.9 points per game. Uh, so they're playing well on both sides of the ball. Here, my thing for me is just Utah this season. I'm impressed with what Utah has done without Cameron Rising, you know, under center. Um, but they've struggled offensively all season uh, without Rising. Um, they've lost other pieces early um, at their skill positions also. So, so like I said, I'm, I'm impressed with the solid record that Utah has been able to put up here. But I think Arizona has not only gained confidence as the season has gone on uh, with winning these four straight. Um, you know, I think that they've got solid wins in there, too. The Wildcats have a, a victories over three ranked foes. Uh, they lost to Washington by seven, but that was a good loss. Uh, they lost to USC by by two in triple overtime. Again, a good loss. I just I think uh, I think this is an Arizona team that, you know, is hitting their stride, whereas Utah is just trying to hold the pieces together. Uh, so I'm going to take Arizona here on the money line. Arizona money line for cab best bet number one here at home against the Utes. Let's see what we can give you for a number. The best money line available. It looks like it's at pinnacle minus one eleven. Minus one eleven for you. Cab, you are on the board minus one eleven. Let's move on to my best bet. Number one on today's show. One thing that has been working for me very well is when I read articles and every single one is against my pick. And they're all on the same one. That's been <laughs> working so well. And here's another one. Every single person that I've read is on North Texas. Every single one. I mean, I mean every single one. Not one person is on Tulsa here. I'm on Tulsa. North Texas, we backed and cast with. You know, they, they're able to go blow for blow with good offenses. You know, we've seen that. We saw them cash for us against Memphis. We've, we've had them, and they've worked for us. Now we are fading them. Let's break this down. We'll get into the line history here. You know, we can start with the money line because that's what I moved on. Uh, I bet both of these looks on the money line. I have a no vig uh, situation here with my best bets on today's card. I got Tulsa at plus 115. Uh, right now, Tulsa is plus 105 at Pinnacle. Uh, you could have got them yesterday at 4.20 p.m. at plus 129. Uh, there was a move towards North Texas that has completely disappeared. I don't mind the plus 115 that I got. Uh, from a total perspective here, let's move over to the total. We have... Uh, here we go. We have it sitting at a 69. It's juiced to the over. This opened up at 67. It's now at 69. So let's talk about the spot here. Oh, let's go into the cash before we do. We have on the money line, 83% of the tickets are on Tulsa. 83 and 74. You know, that's not great. Not great. On the spread, it's completely different. Uh, so it's, you know, people looking for that plus money spot. Cap is looking for that plus money spot. On the spread, 89% of the tickets are on North Texas. The road team favorite under a field goal, and 89% of tickets are backing them to do that on the road. Extremely public on the spread. Extremely public. And then from the and, – and it's only 67% of the cash. Tulsa has 11% of the tickets and 33% of the cash. But who is going to – you know, if these are pros getting in early, who's going to put a big bet on a plus two and a half when you can get plus money? I mean, it was a no-brainer for me. Uh, you know, it's – it's. and then on the total, 88% of the tickets and 98% of cash are on the over. 98% uh, of the cash is on the over. Nate Dog leaning towards the over in this one. There's Nunya in the house. Robert Franklin also on the over. So North Texas comes in off its four straight loss, 45-21 at SMU is 21 and a half point dogs. SMU put up 552 yards on them. We know what North Texas does. We know them. We've watched them all year. 
They have an electric offense. Chandler Rogers is very good. 23 touchdowns, four picks. They're averaging 471.3 total yards per game. Uh, Jamori Macklin is an excellent receiver. You know, 11 touchdowns, 825 yards. But we also know that they go out on the road against conference opponents and they lose over and over and over again. Lost their last five. Defensively, they're horrific. They're 133rd nationally, allowing 37 and a half points per game. Tulsa comes off its fifth straight loss. If you are judging Tulsa by their season-long numbers, they're a horrible football team that's going to lose to North Texas and won't be able to go point for point against North Texas. But if you watched freshman Kirk Francis in that game against Tulane, you'll see that all of a sudden this group has hope. Out of nowhere, they have all of this hope. Uh, you know, they've dealt with injuries at quarterback. They had to use Braylon Braxton, who's been so bad. Kevin Wilson uh, talked about how he was going to go with two quarterbacks. Then he saw Kirk Francis get some real run, and there's no more Braylon Braxton. Now, maybe Braylon Braxton gets a few snaps. You know, uh, you know I don't know. But it's Anthony Watkins and Kirk Francis that are going to lead this team to a victory. This team is 1-7 and seven against the spread in their last eight at home. And now they have a freshman quarterback. They almost beat then number 20 ranked Tulane as 24 and a half point dogs. They outgained Tulane 477 to 357. But everybody's going to look at their season long stats and look at North Texas' season long stats and say that North Texas is going to. And every single article, everyone is on North Texas. I'm not. I'm on Tulsa, Golden, Hurricane, Moneyline. Dabby Cab, take it away. What do you think about this spot in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Uh, you're muted. Okay. It's all good. It's okay. Okay. All right. Well, that is North Texas Mean Green. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Let's see here if you are back. Okay. We lost them. That is North Texas Mean Green, Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Uh, let's go into my next best bet, and then we'll let uh, Cab run through his action here. Oh, we'll give him a try. All right, yeah, it's it's not uh, not working. So uh, it's all good. Uh, don't worry. Um, we'll go into um, – if you find – we could find – we'll get Jose to find another um, uh, link for you to work, see if we can work out the audio troubles. Uh, this is my next best bet on the board. Kentucky Wildcats, 6-4, and 3-4 and four in the SEC at South Carolina Gamecocks. If we could head over there, Jose, Kentucky, South Carolina. williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina, 56 Fahrenheit clear, 3 miles per hour is the wind. Uh, this is another plus money, money line spot. It's not as big. It's plus 105. Uh, but I'm on South Carolina here. And this this one comes equipped with uh, interviews. And I sat with this game. I, I almost used it in my first uh, Wednesday best bets. I decided not to. Uh, I used it here. Uh, but I've been thinking about it and sitting on it. And I really like the spot. This one pops off at 7.30 p.m. here. And Mikey M., if you are watching, let's get you ready for your college basketball looks while we get uh, Cab figured out here. Uh, Kentucky, South Carolina. This one pops off at 7.30. And we have South Carolina now at minus 103. Uh, they opened up at plus 106. They're now at minus 103. They got up to minus 108 yesterday. I got them at plus 105. You can get them easily at plus money here. I uh, have a no vig situation. And then from a total standpoint, move over here. From a total standpoint, let's get this up. Kentucky, South Carolina. We have, it's sitting at 55. It opened up at 55. It dropped down to 54. It is back at 55. Line time says, uh, I like South Carolina uh, in this spot, despite the line move. Didn't move on it, though. Uh, I like South Carolina here. Let's see. You ready, Rock? Am I? Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. Causing me so much anxiety right now. I just fucking bought this mic so that I wouldn't have this problem. It's all good. It's all good. We're all good. I'm going to talk. This is my second best bet, and then we'll run through your best bets here. Uh, Kentucky, South Carolina, Williams, and Bryce. So cash-wise in this one, we have 
move here quickly. Uh, on the total, 92% of the tickets and 96% of the cash on the over. On the spread, Kentucky is extremely public. 74% of the tickets and 94% of the cash. Or 71% of the tickets, 94%. Like, extremely public. And then when we get to the money line, that's where it flips. And again, you know, are you going to watch pros give vig to the books when the line is around minus one or minus one and a half, or are they going to take the money line? So you have all these people on a short road favorite, which, you know, if you're betting every day for years and years and years, it's the short road favorite, the public, you know, whether it's a dollar favorite, but that short road favorite is just bad business. 76% of tickets, 76% of cash is on South Carolina money line. Kentucky comes in off their fourth loss in five games, losing 49-21 at home to Alabama's 11 half point dogs. This was a team that was 5-0 and at one point. 5-0, and sailing along, looking like a quality football team in the SEC. Now they've lost four of five. Uh, their only win was against Mississippi State. Uh, Devin Leary looks horrific. I mean, the guy hasn't thrown for over 160 yards in either of his last two games. He's only gone over 300 yards twice this year. They've only scored 24 points or more just once over their last five games. That was against Mississippi State. Uh, the only time they've allowed less than 33 points was, again, Mississippi State. Uh, this is not. This is a football team moving in the wrong direction. Everything's falling apart. They don't have hope. They weren't as good as they thought they were. South Carolina comes in off its second straight home win. These wins have come against... You know, Minos, you know, Jacksonville State, Vanderbilt. They beat Vanderbilt 47 to 6 at 13 point favorites. Generally, I don't want to back a team that just had an easy, easy competition, you know, and I do think that it's very possible that Kentucky got a little beat up, you know, when they went up against Bama. But this is their third straight home game. This is a football team that's in a groove here. And everybody and their mama is betting Kentucky on the spread. Uh, Spencer Rattler, if you watch his interviews, I watched a bunch of them in the last week. This guy is as confident as I've seen him be. The team believes in him. Uh, he's got this connection with Leggett, uh, Xavier Leggett. Uh, this guy, Leggett now has 1,093 receiving yards. Uh, he's a monster. And Spencer Rattler has never been better than he is right now. Uh, this pass defense is 124th in the league. If you can throw against South Carolina, you'll beat South Carolina. And Devin Leary can't throw against anybody. So I'm on South Carolina, the Gamecocks here. Uh, what are your thoughts about this spot, Kentucky, South Carolina? Because I know you took Kentucky to the bank just last week. What are your well, so that was with Mississippi State. Ago. Which, yeah, sorry, two weeks ago. Two yeah. weeks ago, which yeah. I was going to say, that was more of a fade of Mississippi State than it was taking Kentucky to the bank. You know, Mississippi State's going to have been a fade all year, but the Wildcats are stumbling. Uh, they've lost four of their last five games. The only win they did have was that game that, like you said, I took them to the bank. Um, and three of those losses are blowouts. I mean, I'm talking at least 17 points, um, including that 38-21 uh, loss against Missouri. They had the blowout, blowout loss against uh, Alabama. And like you said, South Carolina has momentum. And this has been something we've seen with South Carolina um, over the last couple of years. Even though they haven't been a great football team at home, you know, anything can happen. Anything can happen um, at their stadium. And, and, you know, Spencer Rattler is not, not somebody who I like necessarily, uh, but they're averaging 300 passing yards per game with him. Um, and, the, and the Wildcats' pass defense is an issue. Um, they're giving up an average of 240 passing yards per game. That puts them at 91st. Um, also, Kentucky, if you look at what they rely on, they rely on the running game, right, to generate their generate their points. Uh, the Gamecocks, are, their, their top strength on defense is their rushing defense. Um, that's only conceding 150, uh, 145 yards per game. I like South Carolina here myself. I was actually considering taking them first half with the points. I will put it out there if I do. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, those are my best bets. So that's my four best bets here. But again, uh, who cares about my Wednesday best bets? Thursday, 6-0 and with Dabby Cab trying to keep that, uh, we won't use the word, but trying to keep it going. 
where it's going. So Cab is giving us Arizona minus 111. Let's move on to the final three spots on Cabby's card. Von Polo wanted to talk about this game. Here you go. 3 p.m. Eastern, Duke Blue to Devils, 6-4, and 3-3 three and three in the ACC versus Virginia Cavaliers, 2-8, 1-5 and five in the ACC. We have college basketball next with both Dabby Cab and Mikey M, and then we roll in to NBA with It's Durrell. We head to Scott Stadium in Charlottesville, Virginia, 59 Fahrenheit, sunny, 8 miles per hour. Let's get into this line of history here, and then here how Cab is getting paid with Duke heading to Virginia. This total is at 47. It's juiced to the over. It opened up at 48, so it's dropped one point. And from a point spread situation here, we have it sitting with Duke minus three and a half at minus 107. They opened up at minus four. So it's moved a half point towards the Cavaliers. From a cash flow standpoint here, we have 72. Oh, that's money line. Sorry, let's move over to the spread. Oh, on the spread, we have 64% of the ticket, 69% of the cash on Duke, but it's moved a half point towards Virginia. And then we have... 14% of the tickets, but 82% of cash on the under. So big bets have come in on the under. Duke comes in off its third loss in four games, 47-45 in double overtime in North Carolina. It's 10 half point dogs. Grayson Loftus, you know, looked pretty good, you know, with Riley Leonard uh, out. Uh, kept the team in, threw three touchdown passes, just 189 yards, but he looked pretty good. Virginia comes in off its third straight loss, 31-24 at Louisville. is 20 and a half point favorites and almost took it outright. Take it away for us here, Cab Blue Devils, Cavaliers. Man, uh, Cavaliers are not playing well at this moment. I know they had a little bit of a, a moment uh, in the middle of the season where we thought they were starting to trend in the right direction, uh, but they come into this game on the three game losing streak. Um, you know, Virginia right now is averaging 23.2 points per game. Uh, they're throwing for 248.9 yards per game and rushing for 120.2 yards per game. Um, you know, you, you'd like to see, you'd like to see both of those a little, a little higher, uh, and Virginia struggled defensively, really. That's 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 the main thing for me is they're giving up 32.3 points per game. Uh, they gave up 31 points in their last game. And I, I, I think this is a spot for Duke, who has also been losing, to get right. I, I, I really do. Um, like I said, Cavaliers have lost three games straight, uh, four of their last five home games, so they're not protecting their home co- or home field. Uh, they've struggled offensively, scoring a little, uh, a little over 23 points per game, right, like I said. Uh, they don't run the ball well, which is the biggest thing. Um, and even though they throw the ball well, uh, the Blue Devils, um, they've done a great job uh, against the pass this season. Uh, so I don't really worry about the Cavaliers beating them uh, through the ground or through the air in this game. So I think uh, the Blue, the, the the I can't say that, the Blue Devils, um, I think this is a get-right spot for them. Um, they're putting up more than 27 points per game. I just, I think they outpace Virginia. Um and I think three and a half is a modest number to ask for here. So I got Duke full game. I'm not worried about first half. Uh, I'm going to go full game here with Duke. Minus three and a half for Duke. Minus three and a half at minus 105. Minus three and a half. Minus 105. Let's roll into your next spot. 3.30 p.m. Eastern. The number 20 ranked North Carolina Tar Heels. 8-2, and 4-2 and two in the ACC. At the Clemson Tigers. 6-4, and 3-4 four, and four in the ACC. Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. Beautiful on Saturday. 70 Fahrenheit. Sunny. 5 miles per hour. Let's get into the line history here. We have Clemson. Minus six and a half at minus 115. Uh, they opened up at minus 7. Immediately moved to 6.5 and, and then got back to 7. Now they're back at six and a half. So we've had a half point move towards North Carolina. We get into the total for this one. We have, let's get over here. We go. Uh, we're sitting here at a 58 and a half. Uh, this opened up at 58 and a half. So there has been five cents of movement, just five cents towards the over. Take a look at the cash flow. 39% of the tickets and 79% of the cash is on North Carolina. It's dipped into that six and a half region. And then total-wise, we don't know about the cash flow, but we do know that 67% of the tickets are on the over. And again, there's been no real movement on it. Take it away. Oh, North Carolina survived that 47-45 double overtime victory at home over Duke last week as 10.5-point favorites. Clemson comes in off its second straight win, 42-21 at home over Georgia Tech as 17.5-point favorites. Take it away, Cab. Tar Heels, Tigers. You know, my thing that comes into this game for me, I am going to be on the first half with uh, North Carolina taking the points here. Um, you know, Clemson might be back a little bit, you know, you can tell that by the, by the six and a half that they're hanging out there. Um, but one thing I think that North Carolina does have 
here um, is they have the advantage at quarterback. You know, I was high on Klubnik, uh, Klubnik coming into the season, really high on him, but instantly, instantly got off that horse. Um, I, I think, I think UNC has the the clear advantage uh, behind center here. Uh, they might have one of the best quarterbacks in the country, as a matter of fact. And I, I know that he's going to have the ability to avoid Clemson's pass rush and keep the plays alive. So, so that's important for me. Uh, the Tar Heels also have um, a, a good enough ground game to keep the Tigers' blitz packages at bay. I think, I think they'll they'll be able to stop the Tigers from pinning their ears back, so to speak, on the blitzes. Um, and the Tigers' offense is not nearly as formidable um, as their defense. You know, they're just 59th on the ground, 73rd through the air, through the air. Um, so they're very, very sub-average on offense. Um, so because of that, I, I, I do think that Clemson wins this football game. And usually I like my dogs to be somebody who I think wins. Uh, but I think this game is close. I think it's very close the whole time. So if you're going to give me, uh, over a field goal with North Carolina in the first half, I'm going to have to take it. So that's what I'm at. First half action for cab on the Tar Heels, uh, backing me to keep them tight against this Clemson defense. You are getting a plus four here for first half, plus four uh, with very low VIG, minus 105, available right now at Bet Online. Are there four and a half at like minus 115 or anything like that? I'll well, take I, the four. I, I can curious. check. The, the issue is I've only got the like pinnacle as a site to be open, and, and they're the opposite. Uh, they have the plus four already at minus 115. Oh, okay, because that, then that's moving. Okay. I'll take the four then. I'll take the four, obviously. My bookies moved it to three and a half. Will Hill has moved it to three and a half. Okay. Yeah, I'll take the four before it moves anymore. Plus four at minus 105 for you. Let's talk about our final game here in college football. Before we move into NCAA basketball, we have Dabby Cab and then Mikey M., going back-to-back -back here in college basketball for you guys, and then it's still closing up the program. 8 p.m. Eastern, we head for a big one. Number 7th-ranked Texas Longhorns, 9-1, and 6-1 and one in the Big 12. At the Iowa State Cyclone, 6-4, and 5-2 and two in the Big 12. Jack Trice Stadium in Ames, Iowa, 44 Fahrenheit, clear 5 miles per hour. little cold for these Texans. It's a night game, 8 p.m. Eastern. I got the first half up. Let's move over to the full game information here for this one. From a full game standpoint, move over here. Uh, we have a move, depending on what book you're looking at, uh, but we have a, a, real, a legit move towards Iowa State. Iowa State opened up at plus nine at minus 108. Uh, lasted there for about 18, uh, 16 hours, moved to eight and a half, and then moved to seven and a half. All of this movement, uh, one full point and a half, happened uh, within. 20 hours of the line being out since it moved to seven and a half, it dropped down to seven for a while, but it got back to seven and a half yesterday at 1 37 PM. So we have a legit move towards Iowa state. Take a look at the total here for this one from a total perspective. Here we go. We have it's sitting at 47, 47. This opened up uh, at 48. It immediately dropped to 47, came back to 48. And now we're back at 47 again. So we have a move to Iowa State. We have a move towards the under. Let's see what the cash says about this one. 23% of the tickets and 35% of the cash are on Texas. So Iowa State is public. Uh, they are a home dog, though not a road dog. Public, 77% of tickets, 65% of cash on them. Total-wise, 59% of the tickets and 89% of cash is on the under, and it's dropped a point. Texas comes in off its fourth straight win, 29-26 at TCU as 12.5-point favorites. Iowa State comes in off its fourth win in five games, smashing BYU on the road in Utah, 45-13 as 7.5-point favorites. Take it away for us here. Dabby Cab, your final look on our best bets for Saturday, November 18th, Longhorn Cyclones. First thing I'll say, and I made this mistake. Uh, I want to say it was two weeks ago when I took Texas. Um, you know, I've had I've had some rough beats. They were up twenty one, and they ended up winning by three. And I had them at four. Um, you don't take Texas full games. I don't know what I don't know if it's the players' motivation. I don't know if it's Sarkeesian. Uh, really, I think it's him. I think anytime we talk about player motivation, it comes down to the coach. Um, I think Sarkeesian has a problem with making second half adjustments. All that being said, Texas in the first half they seem to get out. Um, early often they get ahead they look great 
And then they just fall apart in the third and the fourth quarter. I mean, we saw it in, against TCU in the fourth quarter. Um, they've only covered once in their last five games. Uh, they barely beat a subpar Houston team on the road by uh, seven, and they were 23 and a half point favorites, which is just terrible. And again, we talk about the coaching. I think Iowa State is well coached, um, which is which is the reason they didn't implode early in this season, because Iowa State, um, I know we all saw it early on. We were like, hey, what what's going on with this team? Uh, very easily could have could have had one of the worst seasons they've had in a long time. But since then, they've won four of their last five games. This is not going to be an easy game for Texas. And if I was taking the full game spread, I think I would probably take Iowa State, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do what I know, and I'm going to take Texas in the first half. I think Texas comes out and punches them in the mouth in the first half, and then I think they do what they always do, and they let Iowa State creep back into the game that third and fourth quarter. Let's lock that in for you right now. Texas Longhorns first half for Dabby Cab. That's going uh, come on, move over. And if, for anybody who's who, who's wondering about what I'm saying, look it up. Look up the games that Texas has lost in the past two seasons where they were winning by 10 or more points at halftime. It's incredible. I mean, it's just, it's unacceptable. Well, we have some options here. You can have the minus four at minus 105, but I think I can beat that number over at Pinnacle because they're showing the four and a half at plus 105. So let's get over to Saturday's action here and see if we can beat that. We get a – here we go. Um, wow, this is moving. So the four and a half here, four and a half we can get you minus four, minus 105 too. Minus four, minus 105 work? That works, yep. All right, we have Cabin, Texas, first half, minus four. Oh, that's minus, actually the exact line I got. That's perfect. Minus four, minus 105. In review, this is our best bet action here for today. Uh, Cab is on Arizona, money line, minus 111. I am on Tulsa, Golden Hurricane, at plus 115. Cab is on Duke, minus three and a half. A minus 105. Cab is on North Carolina plus four at minus 105. I'm on South Carolina money line plus 105. And Cab closes up the shop with Texas first half minus four at minus 105. And that is our college football best bets for week 12, all popping off on Saturday, November 18th. We move on to college basketball here, Cab, and your first game is perfect. It pops off in 37 minutes, 37 Ooh. minutes. We start at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, St. John's Red Storm at the North Texas Mean Green. We're at TD Arena in Charleston, South Carolina. So for both of Cab's first two games, and Cab has three games on the docket, they're both here in Charleston. So he's got action here at 1.30 and then again Jimmy, are we going to talk about the St. Louis game? I know I didn't send that to you. I'm just curious. Are we going on that one or no? Uh, no. Uh, okay, I just I was just curious because I know you, you can said if you want. Did you want to? Um, on it? Uh, maybe, maybe after this one. Obviously, let's do this one because it's first. But uh, I, I was thinking about moving on St. Louis. So, okay, if you don't mind, uh, Jose, I don't know if it's possible, but if you could set up St. Louis, Wyoming for us for our next game. Uh, that would be great. St. Louis, Wyoming. Uh, let's get into this one here, Cab, and we're going to use bet online openers here. Don't forget our big bet online poker game. It's not up yet, uh, but as soon as it's up, we're going to hammer the promo for it. But our big poker game, $50 and $50 buy in, you can rebuy for the first three levels, is in eight days. It's Thanksgiving Friday here. Just not up at this point. Uh, this at bet online opened up with St. John's minus three. It's now St. John's minus five and a half. So we have a two and a half point move over to St. John's. Again, this game pops off here in 35 minutes. From a total perspective, we are dealing with a 135 and a half. This opened up at 137. We have a point and a half move towards the under. And if you take a look at the cash flow for this one, 67% of the tickets and 82% of the cash is on St. John's. So the market moving in that direction. And from a total look, you have 52% of the tickets and 38% of cash on the under. Uh, St. John's comes in off that 89-73 loss to Michigan. Uh, that was, what, on Monday. And North Texas hasn't played in five days. Uh, they were last seen on Saturday uh, 
against Omaha. Uh, they beat Omaha 75-64, and they opened their season with an 83-77 win uh, over Northern Iowa. Uh, those games were both in Denton, so they played two home games to start the year and now hit the road. Take it away for us here, Cabby St. John's, North Texas. All right, so first off, I just want to say this has not seemed like the same North Texas defense that we've been used to. Um, in recent years, North Texas defense has been suffocating. It doesn't seem like that. You know, I know St. John's couldn't follow up their season opener uh, win over Stony Brook with another win over Michigan. They lost to Michigan, but anybody who's paid attention to this Michigan basketball team, uh, they look good early on. Uh, so I'm not really holding this one against St. John's too much. Um, you know, and they did lead by two with 628 to play in the first half. Uh, so so they, they stayed in this game throughout different parts of it. Um, right now, the Red Storm, they're putting up an average of 81.5 points per game. Uh, that's only 125th in the nation. But I tell you what, um, a, a, as we see like these these numbers start leveling out and as we start getting more of a sample size for it, I think this St. John's offense is absolutely electric. Um, right now, they're pulling down an average of 44.5 rebounds per game. That's 41st in the nation, uh, dishing out an average of uh, 16 assists, 101st. Again, all these numbers might seem like they're just a little bit below average. But as we get a bigger sample size, I think they're going to be one of the more dominant offenses in the country. Um, I'm not saying like top 10 or anything. I just think they're going to be a very good offense. Um, they're below average on the defensive end, though. Uh, as they're 320th in the nation in scoring defense, they're allowing 81.5 points per game. Uh, again, small sample size. They went against Michigan, who really put it up. My thing for me in this game is this is not the same North Texas team that we've seen with this suff suffocating defense, like I said earlier. Uh, the last couple seasons, this defense has just been outstanding. Um, one thing that the mean green does have right now, though, is that their offense does look a bit, little bit better than it has in recent seasons. Um, but I think they're still trying to figure out their rotation, um, and how these pieces are going to fit. And St. John's is not the team, you know, to be figuring out these things against early St. John's has four players averaging uh, double figures. Um, they're good at hitting the glass. Like I talked about 44th and rebounding, which is important. And I think that edge on the glass is going to be the major factor here. Um, cause the red storm, they just have the size advantage. Um, you know, they got Soriano six eleven. He'll be leading the way. Uh, North Texas's top player in height is Allen and, uh, Sis Sissoko. If I said that Sissoko, uh, six, nine, both of them, six, nine. Um, so even though I know that North Texas has out re rebounded their first two opponents, they're not going to, they're not going to out rebound St. John's here. Um, I, I just don't think they're going to match up. Uh, I got St. John's in the first half. Uh, I got it minus one and a half. I'm going to go ahead and assume that's moved to two and a half. I will still endorse it and take it. Let's lock that in for you right now. Spread on St. John's first half again. Tip off is in 32 minutes. And let's go. Let's we, fucking go. 32 we, minutes. College basketball brings the daytime excitement back, man. How can you not love it? As a gambler, how can you not love it? I hate waiting until six o'clock at night for my games to start. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun having. Well, we got um, also we got the global series and hockey popping off in an hour, so we got lots of yeah. afternoon action for us. Uh, there you have some options here because Pinnacle hasn't moved it as far as the other books yet, so you have some options. Uh, first half here, the minus two is minus one nineteen, maybe not. So you had two and a half and minus one oh five. I'll take that. Okay, uh, Cab is on the board. He's on St. John's. First half, first half minus two and a half minus one oh five. All right, let's move on. And you set up this next game for us. You wanted to talk St. Louis, Wyoming. Let's move on to St. Louis, Wyoming right now. Great job, Jose, having it ready for us. Uh, we have St. Louis sitting at minus two and a half and minus one oh one. This game pops off in an hour. St. Louis opened up at minus four and a half, so we have a a, a thick two point move or more. Uh, you know, my bookies moved it to two, so or a two and a half point move towards the Cowboys. Uh, from a total perspective, I brought that up here so I can move a little faster. From a total perspective, this one is sitting at 150 and a half with minus 107 to the over. Uh, this opened up at 151, it's now at 150 and a half. They're telling me that my bookie is at 149. Be strange to see them that far off of market. Maybe that's a stale line. From a cash flow perspective here, you have 52% of the tickets, 69% of the cash on the under. And on the spread, you have 28% of the tickets and 56% of the cash 
on Wyoming. So it's clear, sharp money on these Cowboys. We take a look at what's going on here. Uh, Billikens have started the year with three straight wins. Uh, last one was uh, Illinois State, 80-71. So, uh, you know, that was a nine-point game. That's the closest game they've had. But they've been uh, facing cupcakes. Uh, Wyoming has started the year uh, with looking good. Two very comfortable victories. The last one was over Cal Poly at home, 80-66. Uh, take it away for us here, Dabby Cab, the Wyoming Cowboys taking money here at 2 p.m. What's your look? So, I, I've, like I said, I've been very, very close to taking St. Louis, and I still kind of want to. I, I just don't like, especially early on, I don't like going up against that movement. So that's why I wanted to talk about it here. You know, the Billikens like the Cowboys. They're just – both teams are only returned one starter from last season's team. Um, the only difference is St. Louis brings back several players um, – who, who just weren't starters that are now going to take on more prominent roles on the team. Um, and, whereas the Cowboys, they have several players playing for the team for the very first time in the season, which is why I've been wanting to take St. Louis here. I, I give them an edge in this mat matchup um, specifically for, for the fact that they've got turning players that they're going to be more comfortable. Um, and St. Louis has done such a good job protecting the basketball uh, so far early in this season. They're averaging less than 10 turnovers per game. Um, they're shooting over 46% overall and 40% long range. Um, I know Wyoming, they've, they've exceeded expectations this far, uh, but this is the first test for them this season, taking on St. Louis. Um, and the Cowboys really turned the ball over, and I think that's indicative of what I was talking about with these players getting used to the offense, getting used to the system. Um, they're already averaging over 13 per contest on turnovers, which is just not good. And those are in like inferior opponents that we're talking about. Now we're talking about the St. Louis team. I really think they're going to be able to put the pressure on the Cowboys. Um, I, I just, you know, and another thing, um, I, I think that the Cowboys are not going to be able to be able to stop the fast break defense outscoring here. So I, I really like St. Louis because of the fact that it's moved two points in the last little bit. I'm not going to just jump out and take it right now, but I'm very close to betting St. Louis. And I'm not too scared of the line movement. I, I'm probably going to get there. By the end of the show, I think I'll make it official. Okay, cool. Well, uh, it's opportunity uh, available. 57 minutes till tip-off. We head back to the Charleston Classic. Uh, you've given us St. John's first half minus two and a half. Uh, the next game at this Charleston Classic is Dayton. We have Dayton Flyers at LSU Tigers here. Uh, Dayton coming off a loss to Northwestern, 71-66 on the road, uh, on their way here to Charleston. Uh, that, that was, you know, six days ago. Uh, LSU faced Nickel State, have faced a pretty weak competition. I mean, is that that's Missouri Valley, right? Or is that uh, Mississippi Valley? They beat Mississippi Valley by 46 to start the year. And then I guess they came in and they took Nichols lightly, uh, losing 68-66. Uh, shocking loss at home as 19 and a half point favorites. Uh, they were down 44 25 after the first half and made a huge comeback, but it just was not enough. Let's take a look at the line history here for this game. Pops off at 4 p.m. Full game line history. We have Dayton at minus one at minus 105. Uh, they opened at plus one. So they've gone from dog to favorite and then from a total. Oops, sorry, wrong one. From a total perspective here, we have this sitting at 133, opened up at 134, so we've dropped a point. Uh, Cash-wise, we have 39% of the tickets and 60% of the cash on the spread on LSU. And on the total, we have 48% of tickets and 61% cash on the under. Take it away for us here. Dabby Cabas is a bounce-back spot for LSU. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know so much if this is going to be a bounce back spot for LSU, you know, both teams coming off, off a loss. So it could be a bounce back spot for either of them. Um, they were just under different circumstances, right? Uh, Dayton hung in tough uh, on the road. Um, and they cover, even though they lost, they covered the spread to Northwestern uh, in their previous game. Meanwhile, you look at LSU, uh, they were beaten at home by nickel state, um, a team that was only 16 and 15 last season. Um, and LSU, I think they were favored by 19 points in that game. So just not a good look for him. Um, 
the Tigers have just been unimpressive in big game situations. Last year, this year, same thing. Um, it's a problem that we saw up until the very end of the season. Um, they, LSU last year, they started 12 and one, and then they dropped 18 of their final 20 games. I'm going to say that after starting 12 and one, they lost 18 of their 20 games. I mean, it's just not, not good. Uh, it's tough for me to have any faith in the Tigers, especially after I saw them lose to Nickel State. Um, I, I take Dayton here. I got Dayton. I just took him on the money line, um, full game. I, I, that's it. That's where I'm at. I think they're the better basketball team. Also, you can go ahead and put me on St. Louis. All right, let's get uh, both of those for you. Did you want St. Louis on the money line or on the spread? That money line's gone down to minus 125. What's the spread at right now? Two? Two or two and a half, yeah. What's the two at? I'll find out, but let me get you the minus 110 on Dayton money line. That's available at Bavada and Pinnacle. Minus 114 to the other books, but you are locked in here for Dayton. Dayton minus 110, and then we'll get you the opportunity. So the money line's minus 125 on St. Louis on the Billikens. Market move working against them. Uh, sorry. Damn, let me get this here. We have... The spread on Ellis, oh, sorry, the spread on St. Louis minus two at minus 110. I'm going to rock with Troy. Let's go with Troy here. I'll take the 125 on the money line. St. Louis minus 125 for Cab. Okay, let's move on to Cab's final game here on our show. Uh, we are doing this mid-game, so if you're watching the college basketball best bets clip here, his first three games were all afternoon action. But he does have a night game for you, and then we have Mikey M joining us afterwards. 9 p.m. Eastern, Missouri Tigers 2-1 and one at the Minnesota Golden Gophers 2-0. and oh, We are at Williams Arena in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Gophers are 2-0 and oh at home, and this is the Tigers' first road game of the season. Let's get into the line history here for this one. We have Missouri at minus two at minus 104. They open up at minus two at minus 108. And all the other books are hanging one and a half. We get into the total for this one here. Again, this pops off at 9 p.m. Eastern. From a total perspective, we have this sitting at 148 and a half over at Pinnacle. It is quite juiced to the under, but this has come up from 145 and a half. So we have a three point move towards the over. And when we get into the cash flow here, we have move over here. And we have on the total 69% of the tickets, 70% of the cash is on 69.70 is on the under. And on the spread, we have 64% of tickets and 82% of the cash on Missouri. Uh, line not moving towards them, though. Take it away for us here. Cabby, what do you think of the home dog and the Golden Gophers? This is another one where, you know, college basketball is interesting. And I'm, I'm a little sensitive to hearing line movement and hearing where, where stuff is because of how college football has gone for me this season. But, you know, it's, again, we talk about sample sizes. It's not a large sample size. I don't have a ton of action this college football season. And if – if any of us make thousands of bets, there's going to be small sample sizes that aren't, you know, where we want them to be. So I'm not going to let it bother me here. Um, I like Missouri simply because I think they're the better team. I know last year they were 25 and 10, um, and they're not the same team. They lost four of their leading scorers. Um, I know they got beat by Memphis by 15 points. I managed to fuck that up. I was on Memphis first half, uh, and they didn't cover first half and then turned around and won by 15. Uh, Minnesota is 2-0 and right now. They put up 80 and 100. And Two, 102 points respectively uh, in their two outings this season. My thing with Minnesota is they are, they're just not a complete basketball team. And it's the same thing you watched last year. They were what nine and 22 last year. Uh, they were only averaging 62.9 points per season uh, that put them at 350th in the nation. Uh, they were allowing an average of 71 points, which put them at uh, two tenth in the nation. Uh, they only, you know, shot a, a very low percent. Now, early on in the season, they are 53.5% on the field goals um, and holding opponents to the 37% mark. But again, this is a different competition here. Another thing that I like is the coaching edge. In college basketball, 
I think it's so important, like how, how the coaches are able to make adjustments throughout the game. And I give Missouri the coaching edge here without, without even thinking twice about it. So I'm going to go ahead and take Missouri here. I got them full game uh, on the spread. No need to go ha first half here. Um, full game with Missouri. And that is down to a minus one at my bookie minus one, which means we should probably do the due diligence and take a look at what that money line is going to be for you. Uh, the money line is yeah minus 126 probably a little minus 124 you want minus 124 money line or you want the minus one at minus 110 minus one at minus 110 you got it cab missouri minus one at minus 110 missouri minus one at minus 110 and go get it robert Let's review all action here from Dabby Cab in college basketball. Afternoon action, St. John's first half, minus two and a half, minus 105. He has moved, despite the market move, against the Billikens. He's on the Billikens, money line, minus 125. Cab's on Dayton here. Uh, Dayton, and that was just money line at minus 110. And then, is that right? Did I screw that up? I just got you know, I'm pretty sure that line completely flipped, too. I, I, I think LSU was favored to, when it opened. Go back to Dayton here. Yeah, that is right. Minus 110 here for uh, Dayton. And then we have Missouri minus one at minus 110. Dabby Cab, get that cash. I know college basketball is your wheelhouse. So have a huge show and a huge day here. And you can catch Cab here Wednesday and Thursday. He's going to be coming in, dropping his best bets in college basketball. Uh, Cab, thank you. Uh, Louisville, Miami for your uh, college football live stream any last words here for the capper support in the show man it doesn't get better than this we got action in nhl early we got action in college basketball early we got best bets for saturday out man i know that i know that you guys in the chat see what else other people are doing and it's not what our guy jimmy's doing here man so uh share the video hit the like button man all the memberships help we love you guys thank you Let's fucking get it, Jimmy. Let's cash. Let's get it. There he is, Dabby Cab. Follow him on X at Dabby Cab. And Ricky Bobby found you Dayton minus 108. It does. Thank you, Ricky Bobby. That saves two cents. Saves two cents, which helps helps with the record keeping. Uh, let's move on to our next guest. Uh, when Dabby Cab and him joined us last week, Dabby Cab went 1-0. Our next guest, 4-0 board sweepage. And he's back to keep stacking. Now, it's great that you get to see his action at 1.13 p.m. Eastern because then you get to see him at 6 p.m. and talk about the market moves involved and what other action he is going to be moving on. He will also be hosting our big AFC North battle live stream, Ravens Bengals, this evening. A big day ahead for Mr. Pimp Slap. Please welcome from the dirtiest of Chesters, our guy Mike M. on the show. <laughs> Mikey, how are you, buddy? Let's go, Jimmy. Let's go. You know what we learned last night, Jimmy? You and I traded little text messages there. Is that it is not as dirty as Rochester was once claimed to be. We've uh, we've learned they've cleaned them streets up, and uh, it's a little disappointing after a big win that previous night. So uh, you know that being said, we're still uh, we're still holding the crown for being dirty. It's just not as dirty as it once was. Let's, uh, let's well, we can it. fix that. We can fix that. <laughs> we'll have a little party over in the, the dirtiest of Chester's. Robert Martin off to the window. Go get that cash, Robert. And thank you for rolling with us. Let's go, Mikey. Coming let's off go. of 4 and 0 perfection. We start at 7 p.m. Eastern. The Texas Southern Tigers, 0 and 2, 0 and 2 on the road at the Virginia Cavaliers. We're at John Paul Jones Arena in Charlottesville, Virginia for Cavaliers basketball. Let's see what we are dealing with here. First off, Texas Southern not off to a good start early in the season. Uh, losses, bad ones. Uh, no, I mean, the Arizona State wasn't too bad, 63-52. But they lose to the New Mexico Lobos, 92-55. So a uh, very ugly start. They looked a little bit better on Saturday in 11-point loss to Arizona State. On the other hand, Virginia rolling. Uh, you know, Tarleton and North Carolina AT and who cares? But they beat Florida 73-70. That was a big win. Uh, they just played on Tuesday night, though, against North Carolina AT. Uh, let's take a look at the line history here for Mikey's first game. Again, coming off of perfection. This total sitting at 129. Open up at 131. We remember how low these Virginia totals used to go uh, back a couple, even last year or a couple years back. 
know, we'd get 116s, 118s. Uh, this side line history here for Mikey's first game is moving drastically, isn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. Mikey sent me his action and uh, he got better lines than all of this. It's a difficult thing for the our cappers to deal with. Now, this opened up at minus 21 and a half, it got up to minus 23 and a half. There's been a little bit of buyback back to 22 and a half here. Uh, and then from a cash flow perspective, which is always important because it, you know, that Minnesota Missouri spot, it god, that's the type of line movement. And all the public on Missouri and not moving against a home dog. That really appeals to me. Don't want to go up against Cav, though. 91% uh, of the tickets and 86% of cash on the Cavaliers. Market moving towards them. And 76% of tickets, 79% of cash on the over. Take it away, Mikey. Game number uno for you. It is Texas Southern at Virginia. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this game moves as we get the last call. Uh, by the way, coming off an 11-4 and four night last night on last call. Banging them books. And... Uh, we're going to bring this one to the books as well here. I think this spot, 22 and a half, I see is the number that's out there. Now, I hope somebody can do better. I locked it in earlier this morning at 20 and a half. So, um, you know, I, I would say that we're getting close to the ceiling of where I'm comfortable with this thing. Um, you know, starting this game off here, first and foremost, SWAT teams, they suck against non-conference opponents. They're just not good. You're seeing Texas Southern right now. I don't know who decided to put this Texas Southern schedule together either. It's their third road game in a trip of seven. So they're kind of smack dab in the middle. Not to mention... Uh, you know, poor scheduling, but they were in Arizona State and New Mexico. Uh, 10 days, within the last 10 days, now they're flying out to the East Coast here uh, to take on a Virginia team that, uh, you know, down and dirty. They're ranked number four in the ACC, but that's only because they're behind Miami, Duke, and UNC. So that ACC conference stacked again. Tough travel spot for Texas Southern. And I think the big difference this year and why we're seeing points getting on the board here is um, you know, Virginia's decided to kind of change this game plan up a little bit. Tony Bennett, defensive coach, he's known for forcing turnovers, playing a slow, methodical game. Um, but what they did is they went small to go to guys that are better at shooting three pointers. So um, it's it's affecting them from a rebounding standpoint and being able to get, the, you know, into the paint and stop those plays and stop those defensive boards out there. But, um, you know, I don't think it's going to matter against a team in Texas Southern. Texas Southern is clearly the bottom of, you know, college basketball here. They're they're ranked in the bottom in field goal percentage. They're ranked in the bottom of three-pointers. And they're ranked in the bottom of turnovers. The thing about uh, – or there are a lot of turnovers, rather. The thing about the three-pointers that jumps out to me, though, is that's how Virginia wants to force you to play. They want to have long, drawn-out drives. They want to control the clock. They're going to shoot their perimeter shots as well. They're going to take their shots at three. But it's going to force you to have to take shots from the parking lot when you're out there playing them. That's how we saw them play the last couple of years and – in conference tournaments, and then as they get to the big dance as well. Uh, and I think that's going to be a factor here. You know, what we've seen with the size differential here and switching it up is we saw 80 points against Tarleton. We saw 73 points against Florida. And then we saw another 80 against UNC A&T. So, uh, you know, big home court advantage. Virginia's won 12 in a row on home court. And uh, they're just led by a cast of characters that find a way to get a job done here. And it's not just one guy. They've got three double-digit scores out there. So although the line has moved to 22 and a half, this thing opened at 18 and a half. So we've got four points of movement. Uh, I'm still comfortable with it. You know, Reese Beckman, 11.3 points a game and 3.7 boards. Here's where you can see these guys in these rebounding factors. We see a lot of teams will have, you know, nine, 10 rebounds a pop there on defense. Uh, their number one guy, 11.3 points with 3.7 rebounds. They got a guy in Jacob Groves, uh, Groves who's 10.7 points. Uh, Isaac McKinley is another double-digit scorer. And, you know, really their leading rebounder here is Leon Bond with 4.3 rebounds a game on average. So it's not that they're rebounding and playing defense. That's the impact and the effect of changing to the small ball. And uh, what they're doing now is they're finding a way to get those three-pointers. They got higher quality shooters at three-pointer. And uh, I just think it's a bad spot. Texas Southern shooting 18.9% from beyond the arc. That's where they're going to be forced to play here. I think it's going to be a beatdown. I wouldn't be mad at anybody that wants to go first half. I like Virginia full game in this thing as well. I want the full stretch of this game because I think the second stringers come in and kick the shit out of Texas Southern as well. Minus 22 and a half at minus 113 is the best line available right now at Pinnacle. Mikey dealing with perfection. Every point counts. The more, the more you say it, the harder it gets for me. And, and look, it's it's exciting. It's exciting. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Next up for Mikey, we head 8 p.m. Eastern to a battle of Dabby Cab's great state of Texas. Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders, two and one. Those two wins were against 
you know, Div 2 and Div 3, uh, Our Lady of the Lake type uh, opponents. At the Texas Tech Red Raiders, we are at United Supermarkets Arena in Lubbock. Uh, now, the loss Texas A&M had was an ugly one at Houston, 82-50. Texas Tech opened with two easy home games. We last saw them on Sunday uh, at home against San Jose State. 56-42, very low-scoring battle there. Take a look at the line history here for this one. Islanders, Red Raiders. We have the total sitting at 140 right now, flat. It opened up at 140, dropped to 139 for a little bit. We had one point of buyback. And let me pull up my spread. I have that up too. Don't I? Yes. And from a spread look here, we have Texas Tech minus 24 and a half. Uh, opened up at minus 25, now at 24 and a half. So a half point move towards the other side. And then we take a look at the cash flow for this one popping off at 8 p.m. We have 91% of tickets, 94% of cash on the under. Now we're only talking about 840 tickets, but line not moving uh, regardless of those numbers. And then we have 57% of tickets and 91 and 61% of cash on Texas A and M. And what we've seen, uh, Daddy Cab, or sorry, what we've seen Mikey do a really nice job with, uh, and he did this with the Portland State look, was fading teams that we saw last year reach the tournament. And, you know, we all remember the Islanders, even though no one had ever talked about them and, and much, but we remember them, you know, playing Alabama in the first round of the tourney last year. Uh, is this what you are doing again? Because it worked out well with Portland State. Take it away, Mikey. Corpus Christi Islanders against Texas Tech Red Raiders. Yeah, so Texas Tech starting out 2-0. and A&M, Corpus Christi 2-1. and uh, I would not want to be facing the Texas Tech team right now. At the end of the day, this can you believe this team ranks ninth in the Big 12? I understand what happened to San Jose State. You know, that was a tough game for them. Uh, kind of that step up in competition after coming off of Texas A&M Commerce. And, uh, you know, they whooped up on Texas A&M Commerce. So they brought this team in to beat the shit out of them. They did, in fact, beat the hell out of them. Uh, 23 and a half point spread. They easily and comfortably covered. And then they came out against San Jose State. And, uh, you know, San Jose State's a, a team that's kind of top of their division right now, starting out this season early and playing strong. But where I think the difference in this game here comes down to is defense. Clearly a defensive spot where I think it's going to be a struggle for a CC to kind of get the adjustments down early here. This team ranks uh, ninth in the Big 12 behind Baylor, BYU, Iowa State, Kansas, Houston, Texas, TCU, and Oklahoma. And there's Texas Tech. And, and I, I think that's a mismatch here. I think this is a spot where we're going to see this team has the ability to climb the rankings and pull some upsets within conference this year uh, as they move through the Big 12. So we're catching a great number right now. You look at the defensive side of this ball and, um, you know, Texas Tech's got what? Back-to-back -back, uh, 40 pointers out there. So um, finding a way to get the job done, keeping teams to low scoring spots. And what we saw in when it came to Texas A&M CC playing a big 12 team was they played Houston. I think Texas tech and Houston are pretty similar in match and Houston put boots to ass. They beat them by 32 points. So I think that's a big factor when it comes to this game as well. Um, yeah. The struggle against San Jose state, but I'll, I'll dismiss it because um, you know, at the end of the day, I think their defensive strength and prowess is enough to take a team that struggles in defensive rebounding as well with Texas A&M. you got a team that Texas A&M, MCC, way too big a step up in competition. You know, they played Dallas Christian. Okay. I mean, yeah, they shot 54% from the floor and 40% from three-point range, but it's like beating up on a punching bag. It doesn't really count in my opinion. So that being said, what I like about this game and how I decided to attack it is I went for this first half number. I went with the 14 and a half, the lower of the two numbers overall. You know, I looked at this game and I saw Texas Tech in their first game against Commerce. I feel CC's closer to a Commerce than they are at San Jose State. 41-17, they hammered down on, um, you know, A&M Commerce in that first half. It wasn't even a question. Now, that San Jose State game, yeah, it was a one-point spot out there. But, um, you know, Texas A&M, CC, Southwestern Adventist, and Dallas Christian, this is just too big a step up. Oh, and by the way, oh, and by the way, Home lines, when they're greater than minus 18s and you got a total that's less than 145, these teams are 58-0 straight up, 36-22, and 22, covering by three and a quarter points a spot. The average line that they're picking up is 26 and a half points. So if you look at this full game and you see the number that's out there right now, we got 24 and a halfs out there. 
So we're still within that 26 and a half, but the number I like the most is when I dissected that spot. Home line, greater than minus 18 points on a total less than minus 145. The first half margin is 18 points. I'm sorry, they're, they're winning those games by 18 points in the first half. So now I've been able to break down this full game number, taking a spot where we've seen them have success against inferior opponents. First half trend shows over the history of the last two seasons that they cover this by four and a half points or so. Easy number for me. I like this first half. Minus 14 and a half. And I see it at minus 106 out there. So low juice opportunity for this Texas uh, tech side of things first half. You know, uh, there's a off market number Ooh. here. So I'm just going right to the site in case this is real. Uh, and it, it's just nuts. How could this be? Um, we got, let me just move to it here. Uh, my bookie is, um, Oh, that's second half. Why would they be offering second half? Yeah, I saw some 10 and a half for the second half out there. Yeah, there's a 10 here at my bookie. Actually, I see a 14 now. Uh, Caesars you, you won't has got believe a this. Uh, this is a real number. Uh, their full game at my bookie is three points off the rest of the market. I'm on their site. Twenty. So it's 21 and a half? 21 and a half at my bookie. And hmm. the first half is 12 and a half. Available to bet right now. We have the MyBookie hookup. If anybody needs a new account, just go to our website. That's two points off the market. So, um, would you like the first half 12 and a half at minus 115? Uh, are you interested in both? What do you want to do here? Because these are valid, legit. Yeah, double um, double dip me. Give me the first half and, and the full game. That is wild. Yep. Look at that line shopping. I mean, this is just. See, again, when I, when I looked at that 36 and 22 spot, they're winning by almost, you know, three and a quarter. You could argue that might be a three-pointer. It might be two possessions. And that's an average number coming in at 26 and a half. So if you're taking that all the way down to 21 and a half right now, you know, we're five points on that number. That's That takes that, um, you know, a whole nother possession on there for me. I like that spot quite a bit there. So, uh, yeah, we'll double dip it. We'll go, we'll go full game and first five, double dip. Let's kick some butt. When you see off-market lines, you know, they're almost never legit. So you go to the website just to see yeah. this is fully legit can be bet right now at my bookie three points off of what all the other lines are full game and two off of the half. You know, I, I talk about that all the time on the last call too, is the line shopping, right? Because you'll see, especially as we get closer to the start of these games that uh, the numbers are, there's a big variance out there. Sometimes it's two points or three points on a big number that's moved as well. So got a line shop, make sure you get the best opportunities out there. Wow. And, oh, by the way, with the old San Antonio trip coming up there in March, uh, important to seed some accounts that will be valid and viable when we get down to Texas. Yes, like Bet Online is, uh, Bet US. Um, I'm going to be hammering the Bet Online, my Bet Online account down there because my other accounts will shut down. So it's important. It's an important <laughs> message. Uh, let's move on to the next ball on the board for Mike. He's got two games left. This one's at 9 p.m. Eastern. UT Arlington Mavericks at New Mexico Lobos head to the pit in Albuquerque for this one. Being a strange start to the year because it was a nice win for UT Arlington over Oral Roberts, 75-71. But then it's hard to get information or gather information from the UT Tyler victory afterwards. Obviously not a Div 1 school, a 95-64 there. Then for the Lobos, they start the year by smashing Texas Southern. That was mentioned by Mike earlier. And then they lose at St. Mary's. And we know uh, how difficult it can be uh, to play uh, at the Gales, uh, you know, 23rd ranked team. They were only eight and a half point dogs. So St. Mary's covered. But it was 40-25 at the half. St. Mary's was in full control of this one let's take a look at the line history here for the second to last spot on the board for mikey then we get into nba with it's Durrell. i have the first half up so just bear with me while i pull up full game here full game info and vermont has fought back and taken the lead wow nice nice wild, wild. what a heart and soul group there uh let's see what's going on here so from a spread perspective the Lobos are 14 point favorites at Penny. They opened up at 14 and a half, bounced down to 14, up to 14 and a half again. Now they're at 14. And from a total perspective here, uh, and I hope we have our Noli Nose still with us because this will be right in his wheelhouse. The total is sitting here at 148 and a half. Now, this total opened up at 148. 
It climbed all the way up to 151. This is 151 at 9.45 in the morning. Mm-hmm. Now, where, where I said it to you, 151 and a half, yeah. I think was the number, right? And now, now we're-, we're right back at 147 and a half, which is too bad. So I know what you were looking to procure. Uh, let's see what we got for cash flow here. Uh, on the spread, 52% of the tickets, 72% of the cash on UT Arlington. On the total, we have 89% of the tickets and 80% of cash on the under. Uh, take it away for us here, Mikey. Second last game on the board, the Mavericks, the Lobos. Yeah, I'm still rocking this under. I, I, four, four points isn't enough for me to, to be concerned. You know, obviously I got it at the peak of the number, and that made sense to me where the number was at here. Um, we talked about this. It feels, feels like I just talked about this game last week too with uh, with our guy Richard Patino here, and uh, not Rick Patino as we know with St. John's, but his son Richard. And you know, I talked about this last week. I believe was when he came out of Minnesota. Um, I just don't think he's a winner, you know. And uh, you know, I think he's kind of a dick as well. And, and I kind of validate that by looking at what they had transfer out of this program last year. Here now, now he does. He became a pro, sure, but. Uh, Josiah Alec went to Nebraska. KG Jenkins goes to UNC Wilmington. Javante Johnson goes to Colorado State. Jalen Tover goes to Detroit Mercy. I mean, he's got, you know, maybe he's trying to clean up the program and do what he wants to do. But at the end of the day, when you look and see what they just did against viable competition, uh, you know, here with St. Mary's, um, they weren't able to get the job done. They weren't able to pull the trigger. They lost 72 to 58 against the St. Mary's team that's loaded for bear. And I believe that's what we had talked about was we took the St. Mary's side last week because we said specifically that this Richard Patino spot was kind of that sell situation. And, and St. Mary's got ready to be the number one team in that conference here instead of Gonzaga. But as we look at this game, you know, I dialed into these unders and look at what New Mexico's doing as far as their defensive capabilities. They're locking teams down. They held uh, St. Mary's to 58. They held uh, Texas Southern to 55. And they've got three unders in a row, even though they're beaten down teams, right? They put up 92 points uh, against Texas Southern. They put up 83 on um, Utah Valley. And I'm sorry, that's last year. And they put up uh, only 58 here against St. Mary's. But at the end of the day, they're high scoring and they're still finding a way to go consistently under. I think it's a bounce back spot here. You know, New Mexico took the bus on the road. They took a beat down against St. Mary's. We expected that to be the case here. But I think what happens now is you've got guys that are not just scoring hard. You got your, your Donovan Dents out there that lead the team with 13 and a half points a game. Uh, but he's also got almost six points or six assists a game as well, which means they're not just looking to go down the court fast paced and, and slam dunk it. They're trying to get the ball moving around there. And I think it's going to start to transition to that slower side here. Um, you know, as we look forward, we see that New Mexico is averaging 75 points a game. They're shooting 41.1% uh, from the field, 40% from the three. Um, but I just think when it comes to the other side of the ball here, uh, where we're going to find trouble is UT Arlington getting it done. Now, UT Arlington started out strong as well, right? We see UT Arlington had a nice win against Oral Roberts, but that game went under. Um, you know, that's a, that's a big factor for them. They're Oral Roberts, so isn't the same Oral Roberts that they were in the previous years here. Um, the challenge I see with it comes down and why I like this under quite a bit is once you go outside of Juwan, uh, DeJuan, I can't say his name, DeJuan Gordon, uh, you know, the leading scorer for the Mavericks and le leading rebounder, he's averaging a double-double a game. But once you get behind him, yeah, Kate Douglas is a guy that's only started once this season. He's inconsistent at best. But a number that jumped off the page to me, when you got the home favorite and they got a line bigger than 10 points, you guys know I love to get into these factors here. Home favorite with a line bigger than 10 points coming off a loss. Perfect fit right now for what's going on with this New Mexico spot here. 38 and 70 to the under over 108 game sample, going under by six. And the total average is a 142 and a half. So take a look at this number. I know we lost a little steam on it here from when I gave it to you earlier today. Uh, that was a nine point spot, but we lost three points. We see it going under by six. The average number comes out to 142 and a half. I swear sometimes these trends that I pick up are uh, right from the books themselves because it almost fits perfectly, not just this loss formula and scenario, but how they come up with the number they come up with and how we're going to get this cover. So the side itself is 51 and 50 against the spread in that rebound spot because, you know, teams like this are catching quite a few points. And uh, I don't know that that ultimately translates. They're not looking to go out there and run and gun in this rebound spot. They're trying to get defensive first, which is usually what we see when a team comes off of getting slapped in the mouth. So uh, I like this under. Give me that under for New Mexico. Uh, whatever the best number is we can get right now is fine. I just wouldn't go much lower than 143. 
under 147 and a half at minus 109. Let's move on to the final spot on the board for Mikey M. We head to the Air Force Classic Clune Arena, Colorado Springs, Colorado. The Omaha Mavericks, one and two at the William and Mary Tribe. You've already cashed with William and Mary this year. And now Omaha is the enemy. Omaha is very lucky that they played the NAIA Doan Tigers from <laughs> Crete, Nebraska to start out. Good old Crete. Beautiful Crete, Nebraska to start off their season because uh, that gave them a victory uh, against Div 1 competition. It's not been so nice. They lost at TCU 82-60, lost at North Texas 75-64. Now that is tough competition. On the other hand, William and Mary had – you know, non-Div 1 competition, and then faced American University. And Mikey was all over them. That was his last appearance here last week. And they won by 19 points. And that was a pick em situation. Then mm-hmm. they went at George Washington and lost 95-89. So that is uh, the situation here. Let's go into the line history for the last spot on the board for Mikey. It is William and Mary basketball, the tribe, at 9 p.m., see what we have for a spread this opened up as a pick them right now the tribe are plus one at minus 111 they were minus one and a half at 807 a.m uh, now they're a plus one spot here so we can look at the money line from a total perspective we have this at 146 wow so pinnacle much higher than other books uh, this opened up at 149 and a half and got all the way down to 144 and a half 144. And then nine minutes, 11 minutes ago, a pinnacle moved it up two points to 146, and none of the other books have followed. So that's a much higher total at pinnacle than other books. And let's take a look at the cash flow here for this one. You have, oh, it just flipped 88% of the tickets and 98% of the cash on the under, and it just went up two points a penny. Fascinating. 82% of the tickets and 59% of the cash on the spread on William and Mary. But let's take a look at the money line. On the money line, 89% of the tickets, 67% of cash on William & Mary. Take it away for us here, Mikey. Your last spot on the board, Air Force Classic Mavericks Tribe. Love the move. Absolutely love the fact that that total is climbing up. You guys have heard me talk about it on the last call. When I see those totals going to the overs, that tends to see the dog pushing that number up and pushing pace to stay at least relevant and in the game. And I think this is a bad move for people taking this Omaha team. Why? You're not paying attention to who William and Mary is, baby. The green and gold have made money for us, and they're going to make money for us all season here. I talked about it before. Dane Fisher, right? Dane Fisher coming into his fifth season with the squad. We talked about this before. This guy is a coach's player, or a player's coach, rather. Player of the year. He's got a defensive player of the year. He's got rookie of the year uh, as well out there. Three of his five players got selected as the top defensive team. They play a strong defensive game. Last week I talked about they were 30 Top 30 in terms of national improvement out there with a seven and a half game increase over the previous season. He's not making the move over across country to the Air Force Classic to go out there and see how they do. He's going out there to kick some ass. And whose ass is he going to kick right now? It's going to be Omaha's ass, specifically when you look at this team and who they've got out there. Last week, I talked about their junior guard, Gabe Dorsey. Number fourth in the country last season in three-point percentage. And he's doing it again uh, last week. Led the country in three-pointers made with 13 three-pointers last week to open the season. He's shooting 50%. He's got 13 of 26 from outside the arc out there, and he's going to continue to shine here. He ranks second in the CAA and seventh nationally, hitting 4.3 three-pointers per contest over the last season and a half. And the guy's just a beast. He's going to continue to be the the hot rod that they jump in and ride around the track here. Uh, The Tribe win these games because they shoot three-pointers. They're consistent. Then you look at the rest of the squad out there. They got a grad student who not only crushes ass, but he crushes points as well. A grad student coming out there was Sean Hauk is his last name, 14.7 points a game. And, uh, you know, he comes back as that superstar all time. He didn't have to go to class. He just shows up and uh, throws a couple buckets around and gets the job done. Then you got sophomores and Trey Moss and Chase Lowe, 12.3 points a game on average. That ranks them 19th across uh, the country right now. And uh, they've got – Over three games, five players making double-digit spots here. That's going to correlate to that over, in my opinion. Now, the challenge that they have, if there is a weakness, they are soft in the middle. They don't do a lot of rim protection, and you're not going to find a lot of guys, um, you know, but not there getting rebounds. But, um, you know, on the flip side of things, to paint the contrast for the other side, Omaha did play TCU. They did play North Texas. So they do have 
um, kind of that battle hardened readiness right now out there. But I think it's just a mismatch. When you look at, you know, historically, and I know it goes back a long time in this case here, but, um, you know, when uh, when uh, William and Mary play the Summit League themselves, they're 3-0 and out there. They're built to beat down on the Summit League. And the biggest addition that Omaha got this past year is a JUCO transfer and a kid named Nick Davis. Uh, I'm not scared of that. I'm not scared of him. And I'm certainly not scared of this Omaha spot. I love William and Mary. I see an even money spot out there. Certainly line shop. Let's see what we can get. But uh, I just think this is a good spot for a team that wants to go out there and gun. They're coming out there with their coach, with his players, with the team that he wants, with the excitement and the confidence they have. They're taking the bus on the road and they're looking to go kick some ass. And I think it's Omaha's ass tonight. You got it. William and Mary. The best line I could find minus 105. You found even money? Yeah, points bet, uh, points bet, and bet MGM both have uh, an even money spot. Plus one hundo for Mikey William and Mary even money under one forty seven and a half minus one hundred nine in UT Arlington, New Mexico. Uh, Texas Tech minus uh, first half minus twelve and a half full game minus twenty one and a half. Those are off market lines available legitimately right now at my bookie. And Virginia minus twenty two and a half minus one thirteen. Mikey coming off four and oh glory. Uh, last Thursday when he joined us. Mikey, great job. Crush it on last call. Crush it again on the live stream this evening. And great, great work, man. Thank you for running with us. Uh, please follow Mikey on Twitter or on X at Pimpslap P-O-D. Mikey, any last words for the Capri support in the show and a little uh, taste of what we're going to see on last call tonight? Yeah, man, we've been uh, we've been firing missiles right now. Scud missiles right at the bookie here. We've got you know, legitimately over 400 plays made up 50 units between leans and official plays in uh, just a couple of weeks, but it's the volume game. And that's what happens with the volume business. We battle around, you know, up a unit, down a unit, up a unit, down a unit. Then you got a spot like last night where we go 11 and four over 15 plays and we put up seven units in our pockets. Uh, we took some big shots out there with some plus money parlays that just missed or didn't come through for us. And uh, we're going to do it again tonight. We got a big card lined up, a lot of work to get back to here. So I enjoy getting the opportunity to come on and cap this college basketball card with you. Kind of takes a little bit out of the equation for me. And there is going to be a little, little late night special going on here. Shine the light on me. We're going to have an action on that Hawaii game. And of course, we're going to have a great live stream. We kicked ass last Thursday. The boys are ready to roll tonight again. Lots of going on tonight here and Pub Sports Radio is where you guys can find it. So make sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up for our guy Jimmy here too, man. Guy puts in way too much hard work not to have 200 plus thumbs up by the time this thing's all said and done. So appreciate you, my guy, Jimmy. You are a good man. There he is, Mikey M, coming off 4-0 and start to the N or is NCAA basketball season. Let's stay on the hardwood and move over to the NBA. We have our most successful NBA capper over the last two seasons, starting his third season with us. And last year, he got off to a rough start and climbed out of it comfortably and ended up with the best record of any of our cappers overall. And this year, no slow start. This year, we started cashing. And he's not the only one. Seven straight fucking winners for me in NBA. Feels good to possibly have confidence. And I'm going to say possibly because I know the dangers of NBA. But goddamn, feels good to get off to a good start. And following the lead of our expert coming to us from Los Angeles, California, please welcome. It's Daryl to the show. Daryl, how are you, my guy? Yo. What's good, brother? What is good, man? I am happy to be alive, happy to be on this side of the grass because that makes it a damn good day, man. Peace and love to everybody in the chat, man. Let's get it moving. Let's get it moving. Seven straight fucking winners. Finally, yeah, a record pretty, that I can sit good. back and go, God damn, yeah. 13 yeah, and 6 plus 6.87 units. Not only that, I've had a couple pushes when I took um, – Money line spots where I could have taken a plus a half again last night as well. Um, and and totals have not gone well for me. So sides are working. Yeah. This everything that's happening is working. I'm gonna try to keep it going. No totals, just sides, and even the leans all cashed last night. So two that's games good, we can deep dive. We have Durrell's leadership. Let's get right to work. We start at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. The Brooklyn Nets, 6-5, and 3-2 and two on the road at the Tyler Hero-less Heat, 7-4, and 3-1 mm -hmm. and one at home. 
Casilla Center in Miami, Florida. Let's get into the line history here for this one. NBA action here. Two-game slate. And then up next, the Cappers Contest show with Jose Bouquet and myself. And we are 28, 20, and 2. We've made it into the top 800. We're three and a half points away from the top 100 of the Circa Millions. And that's when you get paid. Let's take there it is right there. 28, 22, three straight winning weeks. We want more glory. Let's start so here, good. though. We are going to pinnacle line moves. We have Miami sitting yeah. at three and a half point favorites. They opened up at four with a half point move yeah. towards yeah. Brooklyn. Let's get to the total mm -hmm. in this one. Total is at 214. This opened up at 216 and a half, moved up to 217. And mm -hmm. has dropped now to 214. Take a look at the cash flow for this one. Sorry, move over here. From a cash flow perspective, we are sitting here with 46% of the tickets and 75% of the cash on the Brooklyn Nets. From a total look, 80% of the tickets and 94% of cash on the under. When we talk about this Heat squad, who were uh, not off to a great start in the season, but have been playing good basketball mm -hmm. lately, winning right. basketball, right. winning basketball. They have won. They so they opened with the win, then they lose four straight, and now they're on a six-game winning streak. And the last four have all come on the road at Memphis, yep. at Atlanta, at San Antonio, at Charlotte on Tuesday, and here they are back home. And then they go back on the road again. Then they're on the road again yeah. for five more games. So a very strange uh, spot here for them back in Miami. And on yeah. the other side of things here for Brooklyn, facing a six-game winning uh, Heat squad, Brooklyn's won two straight, both at home. Beat Washington 102-94. Uh, beat Orlando badly 124-104. And now Wait, no they have have No Ben. Yeah, no Ben and no, but I mean the big one for uh, no Cam Thomas and no yeah. Hero. Yeah. Take it away for us. Uh, we are all ears. We're running nice. Yeah, we want more yeah. money, Daryl. More money, man. More money. So as a matter of fact, the last game Miami lost was against Brooklyn. It was against Brooklyn. So this is a revenge angle here that you have. Um. To your point, there's no Tyler Hero, so there's no scoring there. Um, this total is really, really low. I looked at the first quarter. From the time I started looking at the numbers to right before the show, it dropped a half a point, so you got a total of 53 points. And it's crazy because if you look at the history of these two teams, that first quarter total shoots way up. I believe in the last 10 games, the lowest total has been 51. And so what ends up happening is these teams kind of have a rocket start and then they just kind of mellow out come, you know, further part of the game. Last game, they put up 61 points in the first quarter. Then Brooklyn lays an egg and has a 17-point second quarter, make your adjustments at halftime, and then they eventually win the game in the fourth quarter. So if I'm looking at this game – I'm telling you, this was the first time I really got scared off a first quarter play. I really wanted to go first quarter total over. But by the way this is looking, you just might hit that 51, 52 number again. So maybe a 27, 25 game in the first quarter for the total. So I stayed off of that. But this is where I think you've got an advantage. You do have Nick Claxton back here. And the lowest boards he's had in these matchups is nine. And so I think he gets some good value with Nick's, Nick Claxton at least 10 boards. I got that. I already stepped on that. I think that's a good play there. I think he gives you some boards today. Um, the second play that I like on this really is because you have Tyler Hero out, I've already stepped on it, Duncan Robinson at least three and a half threes. This guy is shooting up an average of almost 10 threes a game in the last few games that they've played. So if I'm going to look at this game, I'm going to attack where I think the points and the boards will come from. On one side, I think Nick Claxton will give you those boards. And then on the other side, I think Duncan, who's got, you know, carte blanche right now to shoot the ball, who's been shooting pretty well, actually. Now, 
his last game that he played with them, bro went one for six. But at the same time, he had Tyler Hero in that game, and Tyler Hero put up 10 threes himself. But if you look at what Duncan Robson's doing as his most recent body of work, the man is shooting up threes, and so he's making them. So I think we got a good shot at that. So right now, Nick Claxton at least 10 boards, Duncan Robinson at least over three and a half threes. I think that's good money. We can get you that, get you that Duncan Robinson look at even money plus 100 over three and a half threes. And then Step on it. Nick Claxton, let's see what Pinnacle is going to offer. That should be plus money. That should be plus money. Now, this is the reason why I attacked it this way. It is plus. Now, yeah. The books have his number at nine. My book and my local has his nine rebounds at almost minus 300. Jesus. Because right here, yes, over nine and a half boards plus 107. Yeah. Yeah. So if you got eight, what, what is what is your boards for eight and a half? What do you see for that? They are not offering it here. I okay. Check yeah. Books. It's, it's, just, it's, it's juiced. It's juiced out the ass. So if I'm looking at a number, right, that is that heavily juiced, and then, you know, that's either going to land right on the number or you're going to get that extra board somewhere maybe late in the game, right? This is probably a play, like I said, we've been sweating out a lot of these plays. They've been cashing, but we've been sweating out a lot of these plays. So Nick could easily land on 11 boards, right, to where he'll get his boards in the beginning of the game, then they kind of fizzle out as the game progresses, and then he finally picks up a board maybe fourth quarter that kind of closes that number. So at least 10 boards for plus money. I do like that. And I like Duncan Robinson threes. And the difference for that, the over three and a half threes at Pinnacle, even money. The over three and a half threes at Bet365, minus 120. 20, cent, yeah. 20 cents of value there. Yeah. Dural firing yeah. shots here. Player props in Nets Heat. Robinson over three and a half threes. Claxton over nine and a half boards. We move on. Talking about players not in the lineup for our next one, no Steph Curry, and of course, no Draymond. Draymond out for five games for his hilarious stuff, his laugh out loud antics. I don't know who doesn't like Bro, this. That, who doesn't want to see Gobert in a headlock? Come on, man. Come on. Hey, did you see there was there was <laughs> there was a uh, an ex post that went out that said Josh Primo shows his wee wee minus four games. <laughs> <laughs> Draymond Green protecting his teammate five games. What what in the world is going on? I mean, come on, Fred. He wow. really tried to put that man to sleep. And Rudy Gay said he tried to put him to sleep, but he didn't get the choke in deep enough. Oh, uh, it was laugh out loud stuff. Uh Billy Friedrich found the over nine and a half rebounds at plus one eighteen. That's a great line at Bookmaker. Because it's plus one oh five at three sixty five, plus one oh plus one oh seven at Pinnacle. Great fine, Billy. A great work. Yeah, that, I, I'm telling you guys, the way this is looking, I promise you, you're going to sweat this out. You're going to sweat out these boards. You are, but I just think that the way it's set up, it's going to cash fourth quarter. Uh, Saturate says, anyone notice how the Wolves players hesitate to help Gobert? Nobody likes Gobert. Yeah. You, 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 see, you saw what Rudy did last year to his homeboy. Punched him right on the side of the fucking court, man. I mean, no, mm. nobody likes go there, bro. Well, I mean, but you nope. <laughs> Draymond did the same shit, though. Draymond punched yeah. his teammate, too. I mean, he's uh, but Draymond Superman punch, Superman punch pool, but it was for good reason. You you heard, I, I, I guess it's rumor, it's hearsay, but he said you're an expensive backpack for 30. That's what he said. That's what Jordan Poole said to Draymond, <laughs> allegedly, that had Draymond. Super punched the shit out of him. <laughs> so he, oh, man. they were talking back and forth, and he said, "You are an expensive backpack for thirty, and that I, set Draymond off. And of course, that's what they—that's what they call Steph. They don't call Steph by his name; they call him thirty. You know, I loved watching Gobert in the headlock every second of Bro. it. I loved it. If I could watch that on repeat, that's like, you know, some people like the, the fireplace on the television over Christmas. I just want Gobert on a loop <laughs> being dragged across the floor on a loop. That's what I would like to see. Yeah, um, nobody likes him, man. Oh, nobody man. likes him. Nobody, nobody. I, I think what, what he's, 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 what do you call it, man? He's like the, 
he is the not zero. I can't, but he's the he's the first man. First off, he's the guy that technically stopped the league by grabbing all the mics during the whole fucking Rona shit, right? Oh yeah. And then, right, he's the one who basically fleeced the market, right, by getting all those picks. Just for him, and it started a trend. So I think, man, he's like the fall guy for a lot of shit. Nobody likes Rudy, man. Nobody, Nobody likes, him. likes him. Fucking microphone smoocher, man. Nobody fucking likes him. Let's talk about this spot here. So no Steph, no Draymond, and we've already heard from our guy uh, Justin McElvey. Warriors plus one ten on his card. Big mm. Justin McElvey. He doesn't mess around. We got a lot of guys in our chat. When when they say big. It's not like flimsy ass couple Honda. We're talking, we're talking Honda Civics, right? Well, Justin McElvey, uh, yeah, he he had his he was looking to put a thousand on the Penn State game, and then the guy he was going with was like, "I'll take that shit." So then he had to pay his buddy a thousand bucks. Uh, and like, I mean, McElvey doesn't mess around. I, I love McElvey, man. Okay. Uh, let's get into uh, the spread here for this one. We have Oklahoma City minus three, minus 101. They opened up at minus two and a half. They've moved to yeah. three a couple times. So they just moved back to three. This is a three without any VIG. Let's get into the total here. Only two games on the card here for NBA. We have this total at 226 and a half. This opened up at mm -hmm. 228, a point and a half move uh, towards yeah, the under. Weird. Mm -hmm. There is a Jacqueline. Great to see you, <laughs> Justin. Jacqueline, great to see you. I love having you here in the chat. Let's get into the cash flow for this one. On the total, we've seen the move towards the under. 52% of the tickets are on the under, but just 38% of the cash on the mm -hmm. spread. 93% mm -hmm. of the tickets and 92% of the cash is on the thunder. And that line's not moving. On the money line... 83% of the tickets and 91% of cash is on the Thunder. And that line's not moving. Yeah, Take it away yeah. here. This is a pretty fascinating spot. We talked about, obviously, what Golden State did last game. We should probably right. touch on OKC's last game uh, for the Thunder. They've won two straight. They won at Phoenix on Sunday. And then on Tuesday, they demolished the Spurs at Absolutely. home. So... The question is, Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, Wiggins, Sarich, Looney, is that enough to take out this multi-dimensional Oklahoma City Thunder squad? Take it away, Daryl. Final game on today's show before the Cappers Contest show, Thunder Warriors. Right. So the interesting thing about this game was how the total moved down on this, right? If you look at how these teams play, man, First off, Golden State owns these guys. They're nine and one in the last ten. Golden State is three six and one uh, to, against the spread. The over has hit six times, but probably the last five games they've all went over. And I mean, it's not by like a little. Last game, one forty one, one thirty nine, one thirty six, one twenty five, one thirty seven, one twenty eight, one fourteen, one forty one. Why is this number going down? Is it going down because you don't have Dre and Steph there? Is that is it that big of a difference to where it, it, it's going down? So is that total going to be contingent upon the point scoring that Steph will give you? Well, if it is, then that means that this should be an OKC spot. right? It should be an OKC spot. If this is trending to the under now, if they're trying to – if money is coming in on the under all of a sudden, then that's telling me they're not expecting any type of scoring from this Golden State team besides your regulars being Clay, Chris Paul, and then you've got this young cat, Podziemski, right? But the thing about it is, is I think you're going to put Podziemski on SGA. SGA is going to have this cat on skates all day, all night. So the only way I know to attack this game also is I couldn't get there with the side. I believe that this is a spot to where you can take the team total over for OKC, 115. I believe so. The reason why, this team is already averaging 116 a game, just for the season. And this is including their last game where they had 95 points against the Kings, and then another game where they had like 98 or 92 points against Denver in their last 10. 
that defensive presence that Dre is going to provide, talk bad about him if you want to, but he knows how to make the adjustments. Golden State is the king of small ball play, right? They don't have the biggest people out there, and they've always played small ball and been productive at it. And the reason why is because Dre knows how to play big, even though he's not the biggest guy on the court. So now you do have Kavon Looney, who's going to provide some type of, uh, well, he does provide the height for you. But now I think that gives a lot of room now for Chet to kind of be activated here. I believe Chet goes off. So the two plays that I did step on here, that's another good point by Mally Mao or, or JPZ is Warriors suck at home, bro. They're one and three. They're one and three at home. One and four at home. And OKC is three and one away. So now you don't have Steph, you don't have Dre, and I think this is a perfect time for OKC to exploit that. This is the reason why. This is the reason why OKC is favored here. Now, as far as the side, I can't get there, but for two teams that generally go over, the scoring is definitely not going to come from OKC. It's going to come from Golden State. So I take OKC team total over one fifteen. And I like Chet Holmgren, over 15 and a half points. Chet should score you at least 20. Like I said, he's going to be in a position to where he's going to have some position to score because they're going to collapse on SGA. They're going to collapse on SGA. I promise you. And like I said, if Podziemski is on SGA, then Podziemski is going to be on skates. SGA's points right now are 31 and a half. I mean, I couldn't talk anybody off of that. That's a lot of points. But I do believe that leaves a lot of opportunity for Chet Holmgren to at least give you 20. So 15 and a half points for Chet Holmgren. Team total over 115 for OKC. I like both of those plays. Already stepped on. Well, let's log, well, let's log this in for you. Don't kill me on this background. Y'all better lay off my LA Lakers background, man. <laughs> Uh, let's lock this in for you. Let's lock this in for you because I'm very interested in the Warriors. Uh, this clicks. Uh, this um, uh, so many boxes are ticked. This ticks so many mm -hmm. boxes for me. You have a Warriors team on a four game losing streak. You have mm -hmm. them lose Curry and Draymond. We've and seen what's happened in the NBA over the last couple of years in teams in this situation. You have the whole world on the Thunder and the lines not moving. Uh, this right, is the type of situation it. where I not only do I want to back it, but I'm okay if this doesn't go right for me. These are the kind of risks that, that I, I want to take. And again, seven-game winning streak for me on the line. I'm going to put it on the line with the Warriors plus the points. Uh, this is okay. juice, too. You get the Thunder with no VIG. How in the world is the line not moving towards the Thunder? Um, it's just I find it very yeah. telling. The team yeah. total we can get you on the Thunder, Daryl, is – uh, Thunder team total over 114 and a half at minus 108. I like you it. Got, I like it. That. And then from a player prop scenario, uh, Holmgren over 15 and a half points minus 106. If anybody can beat that, let me know. Over 15 and a half points minus 106. And then the question is, you know, at this point, I don't see the line moving. Um, uh, Troy says it did move. I mean, well, Troy know, said it would. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's stuck at two and a half, three. You're gonna find three. You're gonna find two and a half. I mean, you know, of course, I I just talk about the pinnacle line moves. That's all uh, I focus on here at Pinnacle. Uh, this opened up. This opened up at eight twenty six last night as the Thunder with uh, two and a half point favorites. They moved it to three. It was at three for a while and then right back to two and a half. It moves mm -hmm. to three again. And the Warriors have all the VIG here, minus 109. So maybe, maybe I wait. Maybe I wait. Okay. Uh, we will. Well, I mean, we'll if, you want, if you want a three, yeah. I mean, but my local has a three now. So this might get to three and a half later. I don't think it goes back down to two and a half. Okay, sorry, DG. We are late for the NFL show. We'll head over there now. Um, okay, I'm. I'll wait. I'll wait at this point here. There's no rush, uh, but I'm going to be on the Warriors tonight. Seven game winning streak on the line in NBA. I'm going to be on Golden State at home. 
with the bench pieces. Chris Paul, everybody, Clay, step up uh, after the. Yeah. I love it. I love everything about this. We have Durrell on Nick Claxton over nine and a half boards. Uh, we have uh, he's got Duncan Robinson over three and a half threes. That's plus at 118 plus 100, respectively. Thunder team total over 114 and a half minus 108. Chet Holmgren over 15 and a half points and minus 106. Durrell, I love it. Great to have you in action with us. Um, just love capping with you, my man. Uh, off to a four and two start. Let's keep rolling, my man. Thank you for all your hard work and everything that you do for us. It means the world. Uh, I'm with you, Justin. I'm right with you, man. I love it. I love knowing we're rolling together tonight, Justin. I feel good about it, man. Uh, but Daryl, we love you. Please follow Daryl on Twitter at it's Daryl. We're gonna also we're gonna cut this video out. We're gonna tweet it out. So if you can help support and share that, that would mean a ton. Uh, Daryl, any last words for the Capper Sport in the show? Last words. Love you all, man. Be cool. There he is. It's Daryl. All right, we got to roll. We got to roll into our uh, NFL show. I apologize for being late. Uh, it, it's important. This show is so important to me, and, and I apologize we're late, but I really wanted two different looks at college basketball. I wanted all these things. I wanted the best bets. I wanted this show to be all encompassing. Uh, Swiggy says Capper's contest lines are open. Uh, so let's get over there right now. Uh, spreadsheet play today's Ottawa Senators. That puck just dropped. I'm also on the Senators. Uh, Kong's Clips is on Shakur Stevenson by stoppage. KOTK or DQ uh, plus 300. Uh, Rocco Rogers has a both teams to score two goal parlay. Ottawa, Detroit, Pittsburgh, New Jersey. That gets started. Uh, we heard uh, Kings to win the Western Conference in NBA by DG. I'm very interested in that. C-Max also on the Senators minus one with me. Vegas, Montreal, no action. C-Max on the Penguins. Team total over three and a half minus 105. He's on the over six and a half in Arizona, Columbus. He's on the over six and a half in Tampa Bay, Chicago. I'm going to add money to my lightning bet I'm not sure exactly how much uh but it's my best bet on the board and when you feel that way i don't do it enough open it up at least open it up a bit um, a bit no more than double but open it up canucks flames i'm off islanders cracking off kings minus one i love and then we're off the shark spot in the nfl i'm very interested in the ravens not sure if i get there we'll talk it out in capris contest show here in a second c max on the under 46 and a half and we had the stacks play of the day is Boyd anytime touchdown plus two and a five from Justin McElvey. Then uh, the under in Boston College, Pittsburgh. I'm going to take a long look at that. Uh, Dave's on the over 44 and a half in Utah Utes, Arizona. Cabs on Arizona money line. Uh, I'm on the Tulsa Golden Hurricane money line plus 115. Uh, Cabs on Duke minus three and a half. I'm on, uh, oh, Cabs on North Carolina plus four and minus 105. That's the first half look, isn't it? Right? That's the first half look. I know the first half there because it's six and a half. Found the four. Moved three and a half. Yes. Uh, I'm on South Carolina. Money line plus 105. Cabs on Texas. First half minus four. Minus 105. Cabs on St. John's. First half minus two and a half. Minus 105. That's probably in play right now. I wonder if anyone let me know what the score is. That would be great. Uh, Cabs also on St. Louis. Money line. He's on Dayton. And he's on Missouri. I find the market move not moving uh, extremely appealing on the Golden Gophers. Um, may end up moving on them. Uh, Mikey M, Virginia, and Mikey M, 4 0, Virginia, minus 22 and a half. He's on Texas Tech, first half, minus 12 and a half, and full game, minus 21 and a half, and minus 110. 17 uh, 11, Johnny's beautiful. Under 4, 147 and a half, minus 109 for you. I didn't move on it. I just cheering on a friend. Uh, and Troy took Minnesota in my line. I, I'm interested, Troy. Uh, UT Arlington Mavericks and New Mexico, under 147 and a half for Mikey M. And he's on William and Mary at even money. We just reviewed all NBA action. Thank you guys so much. We've got to run over, and I'm sorry that we're late for the the big cappers contest show three straight winning weeks 28 20 and five we're in the top 800 we're three and a half points away from the top 100 and we're extremely excited about that saturated troy robert martin Ristain, breezy swiggy equinimus justin mcavey chill will robert martin north ender troy thank you guys truly sky dragon wine time jay peasy billy friedrich sj thank you guys markel andrew g I wish I could give you guys all a shout out, but we got to head over to the other show. Uh, let's fucking go, man. Let's go. Let's succeed. Let's fucking win. Let's improve our lives. Thank you, guys. Thank you to Jeff Slaughter. On behalf of all of us here, thank you, Jose, for your hard work. On behalf of all of us, Pub Sports Radio. Let's go out there and get the fucking shit. Let's go.